Good morning, everybody. How you doing? It's Monday, March the 14th, 2022. It's your buddy Uncle Bruce here. Stock Markets with Bruce, where we try to uh, break down what's happening in the market in plain English. Uh, it's sometimes easier said than done, especially when it gets really complicated. Nowadays, it's complicated. Uh, lots to think about, but uh, we'll try to get through it. We'll try to figure it out and try to make heads or tails about what this market is going to do, why it's going to do what it's doing, and uh, see if we can help you make some money. Uh, welcome one, welcome all to the show. I'm glad you're here. It's nice to see you. Uh, let me know where you're watching me from and what's your high temperature today. Uh, are you guys getting any kind of break yet from your winter temperatures? Um, you know, here in Calgary, we're, we're getting all excited because today <clears throat> we're going to hit 52 degrees. We were 36 yesterday. We were in the 20s last week. 52 today. We're going to be 48 to 52 for the next week or so. Goodbye, snow, hello, muck. But, you know, the sun is getting higher up every day and feels warm when it's on your back. So <sighs> I'll hope for the best. Anyway, thank you, everybody, for being here. If you're hitting the thumbs up button, thank you very much. Let me know what number you are on the thumbs up meter. And if you're uh, taking the poll this morning, I put a question up for you. The question is, uh, by the end of this week, uh, GameStop shares, because they're coming out with their earnings this week on Thursday night, GameStop shares by the end of the week will be over 100 a share or under 100 a share. So far, 60% of you are saying GameStop's going to be over 100, Bruce. Definitely going to be over 100. Only 39 say it's going to be under 100. So, so far, it's looking good for the SoFi sentiment or the less so far but the GameStop sentiment let me know what you think about GameStop will GameStop be over 100 a share at the end of this week or under 100 at the end of the week because we get the financials on Thursday night and then Friday of course is our first full day of trading after the financials have been released the night before let's see what happens now on the markets now with an hour to go before we start to trade we got the Dow Jones down 100, uh, up 179 points. They were up 379 uh, two, hour, two hours ago. They, they backed off. Um, SP is, is up nine. That's backed off a lot. NASDAQ is <clears throat> down 49 and a half points. <clears throat> it was up over 100 this morning. It is off 49. So it's a mixed opening <clears throat> at the moment with NASDAQ being a little lighter, the other part of the market being higher. We do have interest rate talk now, dominating the morning a lot. Uh, this Wednesday, the Federal Reserve releases their decision on interest rates. Well, hardly a mystery here. Uh, we know it's at least a quarter point hike. We just don't know if it's going to be more than that or whether it's going to be a quarter point with more to come every month the same or are they going to step it up and make it faster? We don't know. And, of course, that's why, why market pundits and bond followers are just all over the map this morning, giving us their two bits of advice. Some of it useful, most of it not. We'll see what happens. Oil is down $4.58 a barrel, sitting at 104.75. We were as low as 102 this morning, and we thought there might be a chance that we could test the $100 oil level I think this week we will test the 100 oil level. I think we're going to break it. We may be in the high 90s in the not-too-distant future. Don't look for your gas prices to go down 50 cents a gallon, though. <laughs> These guys who run this business, they're not going to do that. Um, but we're at 104. We're not at 140. We're not at 160. We're not at $200 a barrel. All the threats from Russia... And all the talk about, oh, if there's an outbreak of violence in the Ukraine, oh, there'll be an oil shortage all over Europe. Not happening, okay? It's just not happening. And what really is going on is, um, I think, a lot less fuel is being used because the price went up. And uh, Europeans are going, ah, we're not going for a holiday to Ukraine this year. We're not going to Hungary. We're not going to Moldova. We're not going to Poland this year for a summer holiday. Too too many, uh, too much issues with respect to refugees and you know we, we no we're not going there. So that 
that's keeping things down. And now the question is, well, if Europe is going into a recession, which it already is in, but if it's going to maintain it and get worse, why would you consider traveling too far from home when, you know, really you should be buttoning down and, 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 and you know, keeping your expenses in check? The Europeans are ahead of us uh, a couple of years. They're ahead of us a couple of years and they're thinking about, maybe I won't quite spend so much this summer as I did in past years. I'm going to build my reserves up a little bit in case there's more of us in economic slowdown. You never know. Me, I get, get laid off, but if it's not me, maybe my brother or sister or my best friend or, or, or my kids, and I'm going to be needed to be there as support. I should have some reserves to take care of it. This is bringing it in. This is what we're seeing. And so oil is still falling. And um, of course, the days are getting warmer now on average every day, bit by bit by bit as the spring turns into summer. Natural gas needs will drop for heating. And so the war in Ukraine doesn't have an effect on energy prices as much as thought. We could see another 10, 15 bucks a barrel down to the 88, 90 range the next couple of weeks. Um, we'll see how this plays out. It'll be great for Americans and Canadians who have these uh, very high electric bills all of a sudden because your natural gas powered and fired up power plants that, are, that you've been living off the electricity grid on, these guys have been paying way more for, for natural gas the last few weeks, last few months. They've been passing on increased bills to you. Those could be plummeting as well because, again, we're coming into spring, summer. We don't need as much to heat. It's not hot yet. We don't need air conditioning. So let's see what get. Uh, time will tell. It'll be interesting. Hello, everybody, and, and thank you for popping in. Duncan's here. Anthony's here from the UK. Uh, Smoke Dog is here. Uh, uh, FX is number 24. Good morning, John. How you doing, buddy? Bobby, nice to see you here. Krim, I'm number 31. Let's go. We're in the 40s in New York this morning. Uh, the Dining Philosopher, good morning from Brussels, 12 degrees Celsius. Aurora, good morning. I'm number 45. Larry, good morning. I, I went snowboarding for the first time this weekend, and you survived. Andrew, uh, good morning. I'm number 49. Doubter, uh, Double D is number 43. DQ also thinks they're 49. Bobby, um, did you do well or just roll down the hill there, uh, Larry? How did you do on that? Good morning, DQ from Duncan. Um, how are you doing, Lair? Uh, Lair's here. Everyone's here. Bobby, uh, Kent is here. How are you guys doing? Welcome to the channel this morning. It's nice to see you all. You know, this weekend I was looking up uh, uh, different ideas for, for Jennifer and I because we're we're coming up to uh, the end of uh, – I'll soon, what are we now? Middle of March, and we're here in this house till the end of uh, uh, April into the first week or ten days of May, and then we don't quite know what's happening next. We're, we're thinking, well, you know, between the ninth and the fifteenth, something like that, we're going to be hitting the road. Where are we going to hit the road to? We're nomads. We're homeless, and and the owners of this house will be back, and we will move on. And uh, uh, I asked Jennifer this week, and I said, well. Where are we going and where are we not going? What what's the deal here with regard to uh, you know what's happening? And uh, and um, uh, she and I talked about it, and, and she doesn't want to go to Eastern Europe for whatever reason. I don't understand. She doesn't want to go anywhere near, uh, you know, Georgia. She doesn't want to go to Moldova. She doesn't want to go to, uh, you know, Poland this year. She kind of kind of wants to stay. If we're going to be in Europe, it's going to be you know more to the western side. Oh, okay, I thought. Um, and then we talked a little bit more, and we began, we began to formulate a potential plan. And the plan sort of incorporates some UK time, some Amsterdam time, and now Switzerland time. Switzerland time is coming up. And so I'm beginning to look at Airbnbs in... Uh, the area of uh, Zurich and around Zurich. I mean, you can be in the city, but you can also be around it and be in some of the most spectacular scenery you'll ever met. And the prices vary. It's amazing how you can find uh, Airbnbs for, for uh, you know, relatively affordable to ridiculous. Obviously, it's the world at large. Uh, so I thought I'd ask you guys, does anybody out there have a house in Switzerland they're not using uh, for a couple months? Uh, let me know, uh, you know. Anybody have like a house and a Tesla and they're going to be out of town for a month or something? They want someone to 
you know, house sit, their car, and their their condo, their flat, their, you know, you let me know. I'll see what I can do. Anyway, we're looking up all kinds of ideas and thoughts. And I'm looking up videos about, you know, what to do in Switzerland, what to go see. Oh, my God. What, what, what you can see in Switzerland. Oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. So, anyway, we're... There's a lot of homework to be done and in a hurry uh, to be done, but uh, we're going to see how it all figures out. Uh, we're not sure what what the last of the, the next plan is. I have no idea about any cruises or not. Those aren't even being discussed right now. We don't know if there's even going to be a cruise in Europe because of what's been happening now and all this. Stuff. I mean, it took took me some convincing to con talk to Jen about even going over there. She's kind of going, I don't want to go to Europe. There's a war going on. So there's not a war in Europe. Well, we'll watch it, of course. Well, we're monitoring the situation. So I don't, I don't know. Right now, we, we just got through curling, and we're okay now. The men's curling is done, and we're, we're okay. Now the Canadian Women's Championships will start. So that'll be another two weeks of curling. So uh, we'll have to watch for that. <laughs> it's all good. Welcome one, welcome all to the show. DQ is here. Alberto, good morning. Nice to have you here. Um, logging in from LAX. I can't wait to get back to New York City. Welcome, my friend. Uh, Bobby uh, saying hi to you. Duncan, too. Um, thank you, everybody. Jennifer saying hello, hello, hello. And uh, here we go, uh, Alberto. Um, I haven't logged in for a few days. Taking a break, hanging with the family in California, which is average 45 degrees here. Yikes. Uh, uh, Duncan. Uh, South Carolina low was in the upper 20s. It was cold on that golf tournament at the Players' Championship. They're, they got to finish the round today. It was cold down in Florida this weekend, watching those boys playing with their hoodies. Well, not their hoodies, but their long sleeve tops. It's unbelievable. Yeah, golf, not, not fun in cold weather. Here, like I say, it's gone from the 20s to the 30s today, 52, and uh, we'll be like this all week now, so we'll see how it goes. GameStop right now in the pre-market is $92 a share, down 69 cents. A kind of a quiet morning. We've only had 21,900 trade. I'm looking at the Dow up 175. The S&P's up 1275. And the Nasdaq's a little better. It's down 26, but seems to be coming on a little bit. Oil is at 104.79, down 4.54. Um, taking a look at some of our other favorites this morning. Let me take a peek here at an update. What have we got? We got Rocket Lab down, up a penny at 841 or so, 842, 840. SoFi is down about 12 cents to 844. We got GameStop, as I said, at 92. AMC down 22 to 1409. Matterport is off 6 cents to 695. 23 and me looks to be unchanged. 366. Spire down two pennies to $2 even. ATIP was uh, after hours Friday night, it got to 180, close to 174. We'll see if there's anything there. No market moves this morning, no trading. Smart Rent has not traded this morning, close to 620. Six Air has not traded this morning, close to 1173. Um, now, Apple is down 275, a share to 151.97. Goldman is up $5 to 332. Cisco up a dime to 54.79. Tesla down 13 cents to. Uh, 781.98. Let's call it 782. Down 13 bucks. Um, Arc Innovations, 55.27. Uh, down 60 some odd, uh, 30 some odd cents. Near its all-time lows. Microsoft 281. Um, up a dollar 40. And Bed Bath Beyond down 34 cents. Now, a couple of things uh, that I'll mention. Apple. I'll, I want to talk about Apple and Goldman. Apple is down two dollars and eighty-three cents. It lost three seventy-nine on Friday. It was at one fifty-four seventy Friday. Now it's one fifty-one eighty. Another three-dollar drop. Um, Apple is dropping because the COVID variant, the Omicron, is hitting Chinese certain Chinese cities rather hard. Uh, Shanghai and 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 re uh, cities around that region. We're talking about some of the most industrialized cities of China, where the factories of the world are located for a lot of products that we want. These cities are getting lockdown notices, full blown, one week. You're not leaving your house. Lockdowns, and this is not going over well with the population. 
it's difficult to enforce and it is a sign of just how nasty or how difficult it has become for Chinese officials to try to stay ahead of the virus. This Omicron um, variant, as we well know here in North America, Europe, we know this sucker can really transmit quickly, easily, and um, can create all kinds of havoc. It's not as nasty as the former variant, the Delta variant, but it spreads a lot faster. And so just by sheer numbers, you have way more people infected and you have people in the hospital and you have people pass away. The numbers are still too, too high for comfort. China is now seeing this happen on their soil and they're trying the same old playbook. We'll just shut down an entire city. We won't let people out and uh, that'll, that'll nip it in the butt. Well, it's not working not necessarily working as hoped. So we're going to have to watch for that. So Apple shares are under pressure because the thinking is, speculation is, that if Apple's factories, of which some now are shut down, if this spreads to more of Apple's factories, and in this region there are a bunch of these suppliers for Apple, uh, we could have second quarter uh, financial impact. Now, the first quarter for Apple is the quarter right now. We're in it. We're, this is March 14th. we got two weeks to go, three weeks to go, two and a half weeks to go, and this quarter is over. The end of March, this is the end of the first quarter. We know the fourth quarter was a bang-up quarter for Apple. First quarter of this year should be very, very good. Um, all the merchandise to be sold in the first quarter is in, the, is in their stores. Like, Apple has received pretty well all the merchandise it needs to finish the first quarter unscathed. It is shipments coming in now shortly, this next week, the week after. That's supposed to supply the second quarter of inventory levels for all of Apple's online and retail stores. There's the problem, and that's now in question. And so shares are 151. Uh, with a high of that 180 level, people are asking, gee, you know, what's, uh, is Apple going to have a 5% shortfall of revenue, a 10% shortfall? What items will be impacted the most? Is it going to be the iPhone that will be impacted? Or is it going to be the, what Bruce is looking into right here, his, his MacBooks? Are those the ones? Or, or over here, his big-ass iPad, is that it? Apple's online services won't be affected. I, Apple's sales of, of good, pretty well won't be affected. But accessories could be affected um, if, if uh, ear pods are uh, delayed or the watch is delayed. I mean, on it goes. So um, lots to think about, lots to talk about. So the question now is, will Apple shares back off? And, and I'm kind of thinking now that instead of writing call options when the stock gets to 160, you might be looking at writing call options if it gets anywhere near 155 because we might be going to 145 a share, like in that range now, 45, 55 for a while, depending on just this move. Now, um, other manufacturers have to be considered, uh, and this will affect our markets in the next few days, the next week. How many other Dow 30 or S&P 500 companies, NASDAQ 100, have manufacturing facilities in China that are shut down right now and will be down for at least another, maybe another week or two, that could affect the second quarter financials of a number of companies. And this is something we'll watch for. Um, the legitimate uh, questions, legitimate market thoughts, back to the, you know, as if we haven't got enough to think about. We've got the war in Ukraine. We have the interest rate problem. Uh, now supply chain issues right back in the four, in the four. And we're not talking about Oh, it's not like they can't make the product. No, no, now they can't even get the product made. Forget about getting it onto a container ship and having that thing arrive in Long Beach and way offshore for a month before it can come in. It can't even get into a box because the box isn't being made. I mean, we're talking right down to the nuts and bolts of this thing. And this, this could be very uncomfortable for a number of uh, number of folks. Uh, by the way, Alberto saying LAX, regular gas near LAX, $5.99 a gallon right now. Yikes. Orion saying the market isn't looking very high right now. Moon was here. Kent, uh, Alberto in Palm Springs area should hit 91 tomorrow. Thanks, Kent, for rubbing that in. Um, Alberto, Kent, nice. I'm in Palmdale, California. Kent, the weather was 45 average. 
I traveled, assuming California weather, had to go buy pants and hoodies, laugh out loud. <laughs> Nick, Bruce, I'm thumbs up number 100 for you, buddy. Thank you, Nick, for being here. Lorraine is here. Hi, Lorraine. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to you, too. Uh, Bob, anybody getting the feel that SoFi sellers are, are out now? Any new selling? Just big business, big margin call due to the Russia thing. Coyote, good morning. Yippee ki -yay. Howdy, bagel family. I'm number 103, baby. Rock and roll. yippee yo ki -yay. Nice to have you here. We are uh, 40 minutes away from uh, opening this baby up, and uh, we'll see what uh, what the markets can can bring us. Um, thank you all for, for popping through here and saying your highs and hellos and how are you? Um, GameStop at uh, 9266, 9209. You tell me what the right quote is on that. The Dow is up 186, uh, S&P up 16, and NASDAQ down 12. So NASDAQ was down 50 odd when I just before I started talking to you this morning. We're now down, you know, 11. So it's improving a little. We'll see what kind of a bounce we get when the market opens up. Thanks for saying hi to me. Hitting, uh, hitting that thumbs up button, let me know what thumbs up number you are. I appreciate it. We got this poll question going here that asks you by the end of this week after the earnings are out on GameStop, uh, the shares of GameStop will be either over 100 or under 100 a share. What are your thoughts? Uh, over 53% uh, of you are saying the stock will be over $100 a share by the end of the week. 47% are saying, no, nah, the stock's going to be under $100 a share by the end of the week. So this is almost 50-50. 164 votes have come in on this question. There are 277 of you here. I invite you to head over to that poll question and give me your best guess. Do you think the stock for GameStop will be over 100 a share or under 100 by the end of the week? Um, we're at 92 right now. So obviously the unders are you know in the lead. You got it going for you, but... Can we reach 105, 110 by the week uh, end and uh, go from there? Or are we going to be in the 80s or what? I don't know. We'll see what gives. Uh, 116 thumbs ups have come in, by the way. Thank you, all of you, for that. I appreciate it. We got lots to watch here, uh, lots to follow, and uh, we'll just see what's, uh, what's going to happen here. Um, yeah, I don't know. Don't know quite what to make of it. Uh, Rocket Lab's up two, SoFi down 17. GameStop at 92.09, down 60. AMC is uh, down 27 cents, and Matterport is down 11. No change on M23 and Me, and we got a two cent dip on Spire. Got nothing on the ATIP, nothing on Smart Rent, nothing on Sextera. We're down three on Apple, though, 151.72. We got Goldman up 363. I think Goldman might run to 335, 340 this week. There's, there's a chance that even today we might see 335 and a little higher on Goldman. Uh, so those of you who are option writers on Goldman, if you're doing poor man covered call writing, uh, first of all, you, you want to grab your options as cheap as possible. So if you can pick up 250s or 260s, that's the way to go deep in the money for way out next year. But writing um, short termers, um, you know, writing 340s for this week would be juicy if the stock gives you another $5 uptick to 335 So watch for that. Even writing 340s for next Friday, giving you a little extra premium and time to decide what to do if there's any more movement. Well, let's see what happens. Uh, Cisco up $0.23 cents to $54.92. Tesla's now still up to $7.80 a share, down $15. Bucks. And uh, Microsoft up $1.38 to $2.81.45. So we got Microsoft higher, Apple lower. Uh, but Apple is lower not because of uh, the Ukraine. Apple is lower because of COVID in China that is creating all kinds of problems over there. And um, this is this is this is not good. It, it's halting production in the China outbreak of COVID. So this 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 is nasty, and I think this is the beginning. This is just the tip of the iceberg for a number of other stocks. I I think we're going to hear about more companies having the same um, thing. Uh, I think we're going to hear more about this kind of stuff. I I, I just yeah, I just sense that. Um, supply chain issues at the factory level are going to become uh, more prevalent and we're going to hear more about it yeah okay so there's that um hate to be the bearer of bad news but that is the reality uh how low could apple go today you know nick i tell you um uh it might be a short 
um, yeah, I mean, you know, give it a, give it a chance to open, and if it starts at 52, 53, 152, 53, and you short it, you might be under 150 later today. You might have yourself a little position there, a little little opportunity to make some money. Again, I I uh, you know I don't even know if there's going to be an uptick. I mean, it might just open at 151 and 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 try to get to 152 and not not make it and then go to 148. The market itself too. I mean, we're up 200 now on the pre-market for the Dow. If we have a pop in the first half hour, but then it runs out of gas, and we back off with a, you know a, a negative 100 Dow or a negative 200 Dow in the first hour or two, that could lead more pressure more pressure on 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 games on uh, on Apple shares, of course. Um, Microsoft shares might back off as well. They might have like a nice little three four dollar pop, but then back away. That's also something to keep an eye on. So, Nick, you might be doing some shorting work today, making some money there. Beach Boy, I'm number 113 reporting. Uh, it's okay, GameStop. Uh, you're off the leash, girl. Up, up, and away. Off you go now. You, you can go. There you go, Alberta Bagel family. Good luck and see you all in New York. Take care and remain safe. You too, Alberta. So, fly safely, my friend. Um, um, SMH, keep an eye out on that one. Safe travel, my bud. Indeed. Well, uh, we're... Uh, we're <laughs> Watching the Dow now only up 184 as it's backing up a bit. We still have uh, 34 minutes to go until we open. We've got uh, we got the S&P up 15 and we got S Nasdaq down 12. So it's just uh, there's just ugh. yeah so much. Um, Lorraine is saying that uh, I received an email from SoFi telling me about refinancing my student loan. I refuse to pay off the balance of 29 grand since it will be. It was to be forgiven since paying over 10 years, retired special ed teacher. Right on. Yeah, make sure that gets forgiven and let go. And uh, yeah, get that off your books forever. Uh, why Why you renegotiate a loan that's about to be forgiven? Without question. Um, uh, Chase, uh, number 27, thumbs up. 127, good morning. 29 degrees today near Mexican Caribbean. Yikes. Like, what, what is this? That, that's, that's, uh, it's ridiculous. It's warmer up here. Then down there, that's crazy. That's since I'm I'm biting my fingers. I'm so nervous. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, unbelievable. Um, nut nutsy weather, just nutsy cuckoo weather out there, kids. I don't know what to make of it. Mm, crude down four forty six a barrel, one hundred four eighty seven. We we sure need a, a heat wave to come through, to kind of stable things up, uh, stabilize things. Let's let's hope this happens sooner rather than. Uh, later we're still down a nickel on rocket lab uh, 13 cents lower on uh, sofi gamestop at 91.92 down 77 uh, amc down the 13 cents make that 15 um gamestop just popped a little bit it's down 38 cents now we'll see what's going on uh, matterport down six me down two spire down two um no market changes on atip smart rent or sex stare up Apple 152.41 down 231. I as I say earlier, if it if it re reaches this 154 level, 55 level, Apple might be a short, and it might be the perfect stock to write options on it. 155s, 156s, 157s for this week or next week, um, and then see if it'll break under the 150 level. Uh, that could be a nice little trade for option traders and shorters alike. Goldman up 438 to 33138. If it can get to 335, then looking to write 338s to 340s might be the play there for this Friday or next Friday. Yeah, Cisco up 46 cents, looking okay, uh, but I wonder if that will last. Again, we're we seem to be wanting we want to seem to open with a bit of a you know momentum trade here. But I don't see a lot of uh, incredible up momentum coming through here for these markets yet. We're up 225 on Microsoft at 28239. That that is $8 too light for my comfort at the moment. Um, but it might it just might not give it to us. And I'm noticing on our stocks that we love to follow our small guys. Boy, are we underwater here? I mean, Spire 23 and me, Matterport Game stuff, SoFi, Rocket Lab, they're all down, uh, even AMC's off. Um, the other three are unchanged, yet, uh, you know, on the big board, Goldman is up, Cisco's up, Microsoft is up. So there's definitely a divide between the haves and the have-nots um, at the moment. So see what's going on. Um, 
Alibaba, JD.com, and Tencent are tumbling in China. These are the Chinese stocks, and they're going to continue to tumble because uh, the China economy was supposed to go. The Chinese Communist Party was saying, we're going to shoot for a 5.5% economic growth for our economy. I don't think that's happening in China. I, I think with inflation running rampant there as well, their forecasts are blown out the door. And now with Omicron uh, wreaking havoc all over the place, I mean, China won't tell us everything, obviously not. But what we're gleaning already and the absolute disaster that is happening in Hong Kong, the absolute health disaster in Hong Kong that is underreported internationally. Um, that's just the tip of the iceberg, uh, the kind of problems that China's going to have. If, if Hong Kong can't control it, uh, there's no way Shanghai and Beijing and, and other major cities can handle it either. They're going to be overrun with the, the Omicron virus. They're going to be completely overrun. It is going to uh, blow up for a good two to four weeks across China, and it's going to throw their economy into a tailspin uh, with all kinds of screw-ups when it comes to logistical just-in-time delivery systems from televisions, electronics, to cars, to appliances, to furniture, to knick-knack and paddy wags. It's going to be bad, and uh, I have a feeling we're going we're gonna to be in trouble. Max E, uh, I think we're going to be in the 70s this week in Worcester. Uh, Massachusetts uh, and Frumbler, I'm thumbs up number 140, everybody. Way to go, man. Thank you for being number 140. Um, uh, I'm just going to buy games up at these prices. That's what I'm going to do. That's it. Um, and, uh, well, you know, there you have it. Uh, let's see. What else is going on here? Uh, good morning, friends from Joanne. Hi, Joanne. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, watch out, Matt Damon says, Beach Boy. <clears throat> Uh, Alberto, Alberto is on a mission to Mars, judging from all the best wishes, uh, so w watch out. <laughs> right on. We are 28 minutes away from the opening, and uh, it's weakening. Uh, again, uh, the Dow is now up only 168, um, S&P up 12, and NASDAQ is slipping again, negative 23. We got to about negative 10 or 12. Now we're slipping a little bit. Uh, 105.20 on crude. Down four dollars thirteen cents a barrel. We were as low as one hundred two something this morning, so we've gained a little bit of ground here. But crude it might test one hundred this week. It might well test one hundred bucks a barrel, like by tonight, tomorrow, the day after. Uh, we'll watch for that. If Americans do what I tell them to do, uh, if only you'd listen to me. Uh, just use one gallon a day less of gas in your life. Um, this crude would be 50 bucks a barrel. You'd be at two bucks a gallon all over the USA. Of course, you'd then ride, drive like crazy and ride it back up again. But I mean, you know, if you kind of stuck with the program, you would bankrupt uh, a bunch of uh, enemies of the United States and, you know, enemies of democracy and stuff. It would be great. But we just love our big fat trucks and our big SUVs. And, you know, we just love it. I was at a red light the other day. Jennifer and I went out for a cup of coffee to Tim Hortons nearby here, about a mile south of here is a Tim Hortons, a little neighborhood one. And uh, we went inside, had a coffee, and had a little donut. Then we're driving back, and it, it takes all five minutes to get back. I mean, it's nothing. We come to a red light, and we're the first car, so I can see all the cars going through the intersection. And I'm, I'm studying the vehicles. The difference between vehicles in Calgary and Palm Desert is stunning. <laughs> I suspect uh, the difference between vehicles between your hometown and Palm Desert is stunning anyway. But, okay, so here I am in Calgary. And there are, there are three kinds of vehicles. Three kinds. There are passenger cars, a very few, maybe 15% of passenger or vehicles, like passenger sedans. Then there are the big pickup trucks. They make up about a third of all the vehicles that I saw. This is in a residential neighborhood in Calgary, okay? Paved streets, corner strip malls, gas stations, and houses, and so on. Schools, and whatever. And the rest are small SUVs. 
the remaining car, two thirds or so, 60% are all SUVs. So they're, you know, you're higher up, but they're compact SUVs. They're not like the big ex expeditions or, or the, ex the Ford Explorers. No, these are four cylinder um, uh, Hondas, Toyotas, Kias, um, um, uh, you know, so, uh, you know um, Hyundai's the same company, Kia, Hyundai, same company. Uh, these kinds of compact SUVs, Ford makes these compact SUVs, four cylinder vehicles. They are really popular up here. They're four, they're usually all wheel drive, um, or at least two wheel drive, but they're all wheel drive, most of them. Subarus are up here, sort of, kind of, but they're expensive compared to. But these, uh, the Chevy, the little Chevy, uh, I can't even tell you what the brand name of these damn things are. They're little boxes. They're just tiny little boxes because they're high up and they're not, they don't look all that uh, aerodynamically slick. But they're small V, four-cylinder engines with maybe some turbos. That's what people drive up here. And uh, gas now is 165 a liter. Um, and uh, you get that, uh, that's about... Um, 550 Canadian a gallon, so four to 450 US a gallon for gas around here. And we produce the stuff like you can't believe. So it's expensive here. Uh, but people are, yeah, they're lining up at Costco to save a nickel a gallon or nickel a liter, you know, for 40 minutes. They'll wait to save a nickel a liter. They're buying 50 liters. If you save 250 for an hour of your time, that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. Anyway, there you go. Um, what can I say? Um, uh, uh, Bill the Butcher is here. How are you doing, Bill the Butcher? I did not know, Bruce, that the U.S. had come forward an hour today. I'm in the U.K. and I'm finally with a broker that allows options and can write calls. We'll have to watch your lesson soon. Thank you, Uncle B. Way to go, Bill the Butcher. Welcome to the crowd. Welcome to the party, pal. I'm glad you're here. Uh, Chase, uh, 29 degrees Celsius in Mexico. Uncle, B That's ridiculous. That, that makes no sense. Uh, Gaudi, that's the problem. When your country is in the, the leash of the automobile and oil industries, no funding for public transportation or infrastructure, just buy more cars. Yeah, you know, down here, uh, I'm in the deep south of Calgary. This is the deep south of the city. And uh, <clears throat> I will say that uh, about uh, five miles from here is a uh, the what we call the light rapid transit line, the LRT, the light rapid transit. And so it looks like a like a subway car slash railway car type of thing, and the LRT line in Calgary we have several, but this particular line comes all the way down to here, and it ends down here. It 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 to get to downtown Calgary from here, I think is, I think it's ten miles. I think it's ten miles to get to downtown Calgary, and if you want to go to the far northern part of the city that's another 10 miles on the other side so it's a 20 mile long city at least 20 miles from north to south and then probably about the same east west I, i'm guessing the calgary is not a perfect rectangular but it's it's a big place uh we're spread out but i gotta tell you that that through this neighborhood and all there are these bus speeder lines that will take you to the lrt line and then you can get in so in theory you can get to downtown calgary from here uh, using a bus slash LRT route for about three and a half, four dollars Canadian. Um, that is a bargain uh, when you think about the cost of driving a car and parking it. Because the problem with the car in Calgary is when you get to downtown, where do you put that thing? And you are paying now 20 bucks a day to park your car. And that's, you know, hundred a week if you're working down there four hundred dollars a month to park your car and in the world of parking that's average cheap uh, whatever there's no free parking in downtown calgary there's no such thing as a free place to park you pay now you pay the only place you can park for free is if you go to a shopping mall in the suburbs of calgary uh but sooner or later that will end and the, the suburb the, these malls will start charging to park because their tax bills for their land is just crazy but in any event, um, for Jen and I to get around, you know, it's easy in and out with our vehicle. But um, got to tell you that uh, that uh, down here we do not have uh, uh, 
subway lines running acro across the city with uh, like with 50, we don't have 20 different subway lines we <laughs> we have the north south the east west and a couple of others and it's uh, it's sparse and the it's all fed by bus so you're standing outside waiting for a bus to pick you up and you better know the schedule and you're hoping it's on time and you're hoping it's not raining and snowing and windy and yeah it's the poor man's way to get around uh, but it can be done on the cheaper and if you're a student uh, you can get student passes and so on but man i'll tell you 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 you, uh, you get kind of hearty around here if you take transit you're you're a hearty individual with mittens toques uh ski masks you learn pretty quick to protect yourself against the elements Anyway, there it is. Um, I'm pretty sure that the freedom to buy big ass trucks is somewhere in the U.S. Constitution. I'm sure, it's something in the Canadian too. Um, no, Garza is number 152. Welcome, buddy. Uh, Ventures, Duncan, Game, GameStop, one year down 65 percent. Olivia, good morning. Um, 156 thumbs ups. Welcome, Olivia. Can't. Yep, all Lexus and Teslas with a few Bentleys mixed in, a couple of Benzes. And uh, Bugattis, eh, not so many, but uh, Lambos everywhere, Ferraris, Corvettes everywhere, uh, uh, white-haired uh, white -haired guys like me in their 60s and 70s driving their toys in the Palm Springs, Palm Desert, Rancho Mirage neighborhoods. Absolutely, yes. Uh, GameStop January 27th is not almost the same. Uh, welcome one, welcome all to the show we have 19 minutes to go before we open for trading we're showing the dow now up 238 a little better uh, s p up 21 and nasdaq has turned positive up five and a half we'll take it i just don't know how long it's gonna last this is the thing about this market the market would like to go higher it really would like to do that the question is can it will it be able to with any sustained um bigger the uh, the oil market right now down 4.99 uh get a barrel of oil 104.34 that's where we are right now poor man covered call transportation there you go yes indeed <laughs> yeah calgary um to be fair the city is you know quite a bit north here um we're in the foothills of the rockies uh it's a gorgeous area summertime is just spectacular around here wintertime if you're a skier you love it here you love the cross-country ski you'll like it but um the lrt line has always been built with a a budget in mind to build cheap 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 and so everything's outdoor and so it isn't an underground heated subway system it's an above ground lrt line for the most part even in the downtown core, it is above ground. It is, they've taken 7th Avenue and made it the LRT corridor, and they have killed all retail on 7th Avenue. It has destroyed 7th Avenue for, for pedestrians. It is just this LRT bus route that has destroyed the, the heart of downtown Calgary and has forced retailers to move one block off of 7th Avenue, north or south, and a lot of them have moved up into the second floor of these high rises to uh, cater to Calgarians walking through heated and air conditioned plus 15 systems, which if you're a worker downtown is great. It is great because you don't have to put a coat on to leave your office building and go to the office building three blocks away because uh, you can walk indoor the entire direct each way, both directions, food courts everywhere, and retail here and there, but it's expensive it's expensive to run a, a city like that and there it is there's your your trade-off um, the inconvenience of indoor living versus the cost of heating and air conditioning all this these millions of square feet of space that have to be catered to and the security keeping the homeless uh, beggars out of there and all that i mean it just it you know yeah it's one of those damned if you do damned if you don't but i'll tell you when it's 30 below out and you need to go from building a and meet a client at building whatever uh, it's three blocks to get there you don't have to take a cab you don't have to run through puddles or slush things you have to put boots on you have to put on a jacket you can just walk in your suit and tie or if you're a young, a young lady you're just literally just leaving your desk and walking downstairs all indoors um and uh, that that is kind of nice so yeah you know there's that too all right 
Um, uh, Chase, Chase, uh, hi, 84, Uncle Bruce in uh, Mexico, equal to 29 Celsius. Nice. Jason, I just don't think we'll see this market turn around until Fed does their announcement, possibly two-day run up Thursday and Friday. We'll see about that. Beach, well, yip, yippee, uh, pretty sure it's in the Israeli constitution as well. Big-ass trucks. Guilty, I'm an F-150 owner right here. Uh, yippee ki for sure, Beach Boy. I'm driving a four-cylinder Sonata, uh, Hyundai Sonata now. We've had it for, Jen and I have had it now for 11 years. We got 330,000 kilometers on this beast. That's 200 plus thousand miles we put on this thing. Pretty good car. Um, we had to replace the transmission on it finally a few months ago while we were down south. My, my cousin uh, had it taken in. Drives great, great, gets really good mileage. Whisper quiet, solid ride. Cheaper than buying a new one. Just keep this one going, and it, the engine's fine, and so we're okay. Anyway, Ford Fiesta. There you go, Bobby. Ford Fiesta. Yikes. <laughs> There's a lot of um, uh, Toyotas up here, a lot of Hondas, uh, Lexuses. There's a bunch of Benzes up here. Um, Volkswagens, obviously. Uh, all the import brands are here. Uh, Ford doesn't make cars anymore. They only make SUVs and trucks. Uh, GM has backed off on car production. Um, Chrysler is a brand from the past. I mean, it's no one even knows. I don't even know what the brand. I don't even know what the mother corporation of Chrysler is called anymore. I don't know. It's a publicly traded company. I think I have no idea. I, it's off the radar. Um, how far they fall on the so-called big three car manufacturers. Who talks about those guys anymore? Um, they're, they're a nothing burger. It's amazing how things have changed so much. But the Ford F-150, very popular vehicle. GMC trucks. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dodge Rams. Yeah. Yeah. The Dodge Ram pickups. Yeah. Guilty as charged Nissan X-Trail. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I'd, be, I'd rather be driving a Tesla. Uh, I'd, be ri I'd be happy riding a Model Y in this town. All-wheel drive, Model Y, I'd be quite happy with that. Anyway, Nazareth says, this is interesting. Olivia, so many F-150s rolling in Iowa. I bet you. Chrysler is one of the big three automobile reactors in the United States, headquartered in Auburn Hills, Michigan. It is the American subsidiary of Dutch domiciled automotive company Stellantis. Meaningless name in North America, I have to say. Cindy. Ford has a new new Ford Maverick truck. I remember the Ford Maverick car that came out, 70, 71. And the Maverick, uh, remember those? Oh, my gosh. Um, uh, Duncan, G GM dropping guy, watch the dip. Well, $92 on uh, GameStop. Fun, fun, fun. A uh, friend had a blue Pontiac Az Aztec years ago, almost uglier, uglier in person. <laughs> Uh, right, Uncle Bruce, who the heck is that company? Ha ha. Yeah, I mean, Stellantis? Who, who is this? Uh, Computer Wiz, extremely guilty. 1995 Dodge Ram with a V10 engine. Talk about a gas guzzler. Oh, my God, that's got to be a killer. Just, just can you imagine riding, driving an SUV? Uh, not an SUV, but driving a Class C motorhome, a V10 Ford gas engine. Oh, getting 10, 12 miles to the gallon at, what, five bucks a gallon? Yikes, man. Ugly. Olivia, I'm a simpleton. When I get a car, I want a Mazda. There you go. Bobby, five bucks to turn that on. Just, yeah, that's a 10 cylinder. Vroom, there's five bucks. <laughs> Rev it up a little bit. There's five more. Uh, yeah, need to bring back the DeLorean. That's right. The Larry uh, Motor Vehicle Free. Here, I got me a bike. <laughs> right on. Yep, it's something. A uh, Beach Boy runs on banana peels right on. <laughs> oh my, oh my. Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of big old um, pickup trucks around here. My my cousin had a really neat vehicle. He had a he had a, a Dodge Ram uh, pickup extended cab diesel. And uh, it was beautiful. It was loaded with all the features. And it got 33 miles to the gallon on the highway. Close to 30 in the city. And whisper quiet. He loved that rig. 
uh, eco-friendly, Larry. Uh, Duncan, I'm ready to drive my e-bike. Uh, Bobby, a banana peels making antimatter, which is why it was fed to the car. Uh, miraculous. I'm thumbs up number 175. Bruce, good morning. Thank you, everybody, for being here and giving us some thumbs ups. Let me know what number you are today. Uh, there are 349 of you here right now. We have 178 of you giving us thumbs ups. Thank you. Uh, we are watching a poll question here. I have asked uh, by the end of this week, GameStop will be over or under $100 a share. The overs say are 51%. The under 49%. There's 264 of you answering the poll question. And it is neck and neck here as to who thinks it's going to be higher or lower than uh, $100 a share. We're at $92 right now, down 69 cents in the pre-market. With 10 minutes to go, I'm going to see how this plays out here. Unbelievable. Thank you, all of you who have participated in that poll, hitting the thumbs up button for me, letting me know what number you are. You know, I wish my V8 would run on banana skins. Um, uh, Chase... Dodge Ramp 4x4, four four, baby. Uh, Chris, uh, uh, Condi, I'm number 178. Um, uh, Chase, uh, Suburban 4x4. Uh, Beach Boy, Larry, how about a visit to Israel? Need some snowboard lessons? Uh, Bobby, uh, convert it to a furnace oil kiwi. Um, Olivia, if, if it's over 100, I smile. If it's under, I buy more. It's easy. It's so simple. Can't love my diesel BMW, awesome gas mileage, and so fast. Oh, there you go. Many Beamers in the valley down there. Many, many, many happy Beamer owners uh, zipping about the desert and area and uh, very quick. Oh, yeah, in California, uh, folks, a lot of uh, the, the top five vehicles are uh, the Accord, the Camry, uh, the uh, Civic, the Model 3 and the Model Y. Those are the five best-selling vehicles in California in numbers. Two Teslas and the rest, Toyota, Honda. That No North American producer, other than Tesla, obviously. No other, no, no Fords, no no Chevys, no, 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 no. Yeah, Kiwi, uh, Bobby, I think that would void the warranty uh, if you put those apple skins in there, or banana skins. Probably right. Um, we're up uh, 231 on the Dow, 19 on S&P. We're down three on NASDAQ. We are doing this um, uh, just just hanging around break even on NASDAQ. 92.30 on GameStop. Um, oil down 411 to 105.22. There you are. Interesting. Uh, Gaudi, I'm drinking a V8. There you go. Uh, drinking a V8. I'm drinking a caffeine-free Diet Cola. Thank you, everybody, for being here with me today. Appreciate it. Great to see you guys. Let's see what this market wants to do this morning, see if we, we can make some money with it. What kind of trading is going to happen today for you guys? Um, got more SoFi at 840. God, yes. Oh, my gosh. SoFi at 840. Crazy. It's, it's goofy. It's just, that's goofy. 863, I show, show it here. Let me to 841. 841 right now in SoFi. Buying it at 840. That's incredible. KW, good morning. Uh, Bobby, waiting for SoFi under seven for my next hundred. Uh, Olivia, that's a bargoon. Uh, that what that's what that is. Coffee time at uh, at uh, at Uncle Bruce's place. Uh, thanks, to Duncan. Uh, uh, probably by Thursday at this rate. Beach Boy, it's Coke Zero for me. There you go, Coke Zero. Um, everybody has their favorite beverage first thing in the morning. Welcome one, welcome all. Uh, it's nice to see you all here. Um, my goodness. Um, yeah, watching for this market to open up here in about six minutes. Uh, following the opening and see what's going on. Let's take a look at pre-market quotes. Right now, I am showing Rocket Lab down 9 to 8.30. I've got SoFi down 15 to 8.40. Unbelievable. GameStop down 40 cents to 92.30. AMC down 25 cents to 14.05. Matterport looks like it's off 6 cents to 6.95. 23 Mila down 2 cents to 3.64. We're down a nickel on Spire down 5 cents to 197. 
Uh, ATIP is up three, uh, 177 a share. Uh, nothing on Smart Rent and nothing on Sextera yet. Got Apple down 323 to 150, 150. Want to watch the opening on this closely. There might be a there might be an option trade for those of you who are short term option writers. If you want to write an option that expires this Friday or next Friday on Apple, if the shares um, have a chance at 152, 154, 155, I don't know if they will. Uh, you can then write 55s, 156s, 157s for this Friday or next Friday or even the Friday after that and take in as much out of the money premium as possible on Apple contracts um, and see if these shares reach 145 in the next day or two or three. There might be a nice little flip there for option traders to take advantage of a down dip. So just keep an eye on that. Goldman is up 526 in the pre-market. 332.27 right now. 332.27 on your Goldman. Um, this 335 range is doable. Maybe even 337. That would set you up to write 340s for Friday. 340s. For next Friday, uh, look for premiums there. Uh, Cisco up 56 cents to 55.25. Looking at 56s, 57s maybe for this week or next week. Tesla is down $12 to 782. Arc Adventures or Arc Innovation. Adventure, it's an adventure. Arc Adventures, yeah. Arc Innovation, the uh, the uh, disruptor fund down 23 cents to 55.35. I think writing. Uh, 57s and 58s this week might be in the wheelhouse. We'll have to see if there's any upside at all in the first 20, 30 minutes on, on any of these markets that could affect ARC, and then you can write calls against it. Microsoft is only up 87 cents. We were up two bucks earlier. We're at 281.20. 281.20 up a dollar 12. That 285 or higher before I'm interested in writing calls, I'd prefer. We'll see how this goes. That Bed Bath Beyond, man, 1967 a share down 32 cents. It is not looking good. Uh, that uh, that 9.8% uh, buy-in by um, you know Mr. Cohen is is not delivering a high move. That stock was 35 dollars pre-market when the word came out that he bought almost 10% of the stock, and now nothing. So we'll see. That maybe this is the entry point. Maybe, but I. I got nothing, kids. I got nothing on that. Okay. Um, blonde coffee with French vanilla coffee cream is my jam, says Nazareth. Larry, I'd love to go. I've been hoping I've been hoping one of my friends would do the birthright trip and I could tag along. What what is that? Oh, I see what you mean. Going to Israel. Uh, Credit Savage. Wait, I'm am I the only simple that drinks coffee? Good morning, Simpletons. Am I the only one? Beach Boy, Nazareth, that's it. You win. Anthony, uh, with these market prices, Crown and Coke. <laughs> Crown Royal. 99 Nation videos. Coffee IV drip right here. Uh, Credit Savage, Nazareth, blonde coffee is the truth. So much caffeine, I need it. Jennifer, espresso here. I've already had my two coffees. Uh, I have them first thing before I even go on the air. Coffee, checking in with you. And the Credit Savage says, yippee ki yay. Vernon, uh, coffee to go, tea at home. Olivia Blonde Roasts, um, Adventure Duncan Woodford Reserve for me the, with Ginger O, The Rock, Beach Boy, Toaster's Choice when I need a ba Taster's Choice when I need a boost. Fun fact, some folks think the darker the roast, the more caffeine. Wrong. Roasting burns the caffeine. Blonde Roasts keep more caffeine and flavor. Yummy. Sell my house fast. And Upper Merle Roast Sofa at this level is like getting filet mignon for 80 cents a pound. Um, Mignon, uh, Credit Savage, Beach Boy, Taster's Choice. Come on, man. Here in Israel, you should be drinking the most delicious African beans or Middle Eastern roasts, the travesty of it all. But then I guess the dollars of it all maybe is the problem or the shekels of it all. We are a minute away from Larry giving us the big hit for the bell game here. We're going to start ringing the bells and get on with it. And let's hope we have some nice movements here. We'll have a lot to follow. That is for sure. We had a drop on Friday of 229 points on the Dow. We are pre-market right now up 241. So the elimination of the down dip is right off the opening, theoretically. Duncan uh, Pike Roast. Oh, my, we got all kinds of coffee now being talked about here. Larry is about to ring the bells as we are about to get things started. I'm showing 93.77 on GameStop. 
We're up a dollar eight. Yay! It's coming back up. Uh, quick, someone poke SoFi and GameStop. Make sure they're alive. There you go. Uh, Larry has rung the bells. It's official, baby. We are open for business now. With Weasby's tradings, and uh, we're ready to go. What's going to happen? I do knew. Uh, we're here to watch it. Coffee break. Need a hot cup of coffee, says Duncan. Beach boy. Credit quietly weeping at the corner now. Um, <laughs> Woohoo, says Olivia. We're up and running. Let's go, baby. We're up 219 on the Dow right now. So we've got a little pop happening here. First, the first impression of the day. I got Rocket Lab up a penny. Uh, so far at 835, in case anybody wasn't happy with an 840 trade. How about 835? Philly Mignon is now 75 cents a pound. How about that? Uh, what can I say? Uh, 233 gain on the Dow. Uh, Rocket Lab down a penny. So far, 840 now. GameStop 9260 up, uh, down nine cents. AMC down 52 to 1378 on AMC. Matterport 701 unchanged. ME 370 up four cents. Spire still showing down 11. ATP still showing down two. Smart Rent down 13. I don't even know if they're open. Waiting and watching and wondering and who. What's it going to happen? What's it going to be? What's it going to be? yippee ki Tried that monkey poo roast once. Felt hair growing on my chest. <laughs> Good morning, Duncan. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome, one and all, to the markets for Monday, March the 14th. It's 7.31 my time, 9.31 New York time. Uh, there are 392 wonderful, sophisticated people here joining us this morning. For the opening, it's nice to have you here. Uh, thank you for the 209 thumbs ups already. And 311 people have addressed my poll question. By the end of this week, GameStop will be over or under $100 a share. Earnings come out Thursday. What's going to happen? 51% say yes. The stock will be over $100 a share. 49% going, no, the stock will not be over $100 a share by the end of the week, Bruce. We think the opposite. So we're going to find out. That's a 50-50 thing right there. Unbelievable. We got the market rolling here. Uh, we're now looking at a 224 gain on the Dow, which is good. We got S&P up 13.8. That's good. But we're down 26 on the NASDAQ. We're not getting the follow-through on the NASDAQ. Oil down 4.94 a barrel to 104.39. This is good. Lower oil, good for markets, good for consumers, good for taming inflation, good thing. But how much, how low will oil go and stay? That is the question right now. Uh, down 494 a barrel at this moment in time, all right? Um, you know, uh, Chris ever saying, yippee Kaye, let me tell you. That hair, it was not your chest, the hair that was growing on. That was, that was, no, it was not you. Uh, Duncan, glad to see you here, Joanne. There you go. Joanne, welcome, Joanne, Joanne Hubs. Nice to have you here. The Dow is up now 155, make it 189. We're just jumping about here. Boot in the boot, as we like to say in Canada. Rocket Lab down four cents to 835. SoFi down 35 to 820. Was 840 too much to pay for SoFi? How about 820 a share for SoFi? Is that a good bargain? How about maybe 816 for a stink bid? 811 stink bid. 801 stink bids. How about those? Might get lucky. I don't know. You might. SoFi traded 4.1 million to start the day. Somebody got sold out of $16 million. Uh, no, no, no. Someone got sold out of $32 million in stock this morning because that's what that is a four million share sell-off at around eight something that's 32 33 million someone had to get rid of that's what i think this is i i don't think this is a the company is no good they don't know what they're doing they're not growing they'll never become a bank i have news for you they are a bank uh 8 13 right now and the selling keeps coming in someone's getting wiped out they're being forced out the stock is down 42 cents this morning on SoFi. Philly Mignon is now 69 cents a pound called SoFi. Now at 808. Have you got your stink bids in? At 801, 796, 791, 
786, 781. Get your stink bids in and hurry the heck up. I don't know how much lower this will go. 802 right now on SoFi. 802 on SoFi, down 53 cents. Someone is getting wiped out of the earth. 5.4 million have now come through. That is a 40 plus million dollar sellout that has been happening here. Someone is being wiped out for 40 million bucks. That's what's going on. That's why in five minutes, we've traded over 5 million down to 802. 815 right now is the final or the current trade on this thing. Unbelievable. Crazy. Just insanity. Uh, but again, I can I help someone who's getting sold out? I can't help them. I can't help those guys. They're getting sold out. It's 818 now. Maybe the sellout is over. It's possible. 5.7 million. 300,000 shares went from 802 to 818. There we are, 818. Still down 37 cents. Um, did you have a state bid down there? You might have got lucky. I just don't know. I just don't know. Mm, Larry, it's going to be a short trading week for me. Uh, my jury duty came back. If this notice is to be believed, I will be in the courthouse every day from this Friday until the end of April. That's ridiculous. Uh, sounds like an intense case. Uh, Duncan, Larry, why did you check your mailbox? What are you doing? Uh, 224 for the thumbs ups, Big Daddy. But thank you, buddy. Sub 90 on GameStop. Uh, 8861 right now. Uh, Credit Savage. Hey, Bagel uh, Gang, if anyone has Netflix, there's a real good movie on right now called Margin Call. Oh, yes. It's really good. You get a glimpse of the shenanigans. These hedgies go to screw folks over. Oh, it's important to watch that movie. Goody, I think I saw 802 on SoFi on Fidelity. I did. Um, 818 now on SoFi. The Dow is only up 79 points. So we've got a we got a we got sellouts happening all over the place. Um, Rocket Lab is up 17 though. That is going up. It's 856. SoFi is down 39 to 816. GameStop 8850 down four dollars. AMC 1326 down a buck. Matterport 699 down two cents. ME 364 down. Two cents. Spire, 192 down 9.9 .9 cents. ATIP down a nickel at 169. Smart Rent is down 4 cents. Six there down 6. So uh, our stocks are not doing that badly. The worst performer actually is um, is SoFi, uh, down at 802 at one point. Now 817. So GameStop is the closest, uh, the next down dipper, uh, down 440. And then AMC down 116. Is getting hammered but that's not one of our stocks it's just a stock we follow duncan high credit what's new coyote 8888 filled on gamestop uh got it i saw eight zero zero five at one point guess i'll put in my stink bid for 777 expected to hit later today on sofi larry um it's a grand jury these are those are always a long session when i had it maryland it was an 18 month term but only once a week un Believable, ridiculous, just insanity. The Dow up 107, Rocket Lab at 850, up 11. Uh, those two are green. 821 on SoFi. We've come back 19 cents from the low. Um, uh, Yippee ki -yay. How did you get so lucky, Larry, to be on this? Oh my God. Uh, 816 on SoFi. It's GameStop 8967, AMC 1328 down 102, Matterport 695. Uh, down six, ME down two pennies, Spire down ten, ATIP down six cents, Smart Rent down four, six there down five cents, Robinhood down sixty one, Vanek down two eighty, Home Depot up sixty one cents, IBM down forty one cents, Microsoft up one fifty six, Apple one fifty one seventy five, down two ninety eight. We got up to one fifty two ninety six on Apple. That's as good as it got. So that was a dollar twenty better than this. So we were still down one. 78 a share on apple for the best price of the morning watch this and so this is a sh this could be a short apple could be a short to 145. uh goldman sachs up 326 down 74 cents interestingly there it was up five bucks all morning it opened at 334 got up it had a high of 331 kind of now 326 so that's given up some ground. Uh, surprising on that one. On the Goldman, Cisco up 21 cents. Facebook up 232. Amazon up 860. Tesla down 35 dollars. Now down 32 dollars to 763. Google down 1380. 
Bed Bath Beyond down 37 cents to 1962. Blackberry down 15. Royal Caribbean down 154 to 6689. We got Target down 182. JP Morgan up a buck. Uh, Costco down a dollar 30. Walmart up 52 cents. Nvidia down three bucks. Mm, American Airlines down 23 cents to 13.79. Wow. Netflix down 287. Moderna up 13 dollars. 151 on Moderna. Improving here this morning. There's got to be good news coming from the vaccine front. The Dow up only 53. S&P down 7. NASDAQ down 90. It's gone negative, and it only took 10 minutes to do this. Um, did uh, Netflix bring margin call back? Wasn't available two weeks ago. Holy cow. I think depending on which uh, service you have, a U.S. service, the Canada version, the European version, so on and so on. Holy cow, says Olivia. I obviously fear the day I get dreary, dirty. Yippee guy, yay, said Larry. Um, uh, Evangel Duncan, uh, who's looking to cruise in, on Norwegian? Um, let's see. Um, awesome. My parents ski uh, nautique get four miles to the gallon on the water. You can watch the gauge drop as you drive. Gulp, gulp, gulp. Uh, I got paid Sunday, and these prices are so low that it's going to feel like I wasn't even paid yesterday. Laughing out loud. We're up 83 on the Dow. Rocket Lab only up two cents to 841. SoFi down 51 cents to 804 again. We're down again. 808 now. SoFi on 7.95 million. 8 million at 8 is $64 million of selling that has come into SoFi in 11 minutes. That is not a bank problem. That is a shareholder problem. And it is. Maybe bigger than we see here. I don't know how many millions have to come in, how many dollars have to be raised, but someone is getting knocked out here. Uh, 810 now on SoFi, down 45. We're up 9 on Rocket Lab, and we're up 75 on the Dow. GameStop down 579 to 86.90. AMC down a dollar. Matterport unchanged. Uh, ME, uh, yeah, Matterport back to 7, 701. ME up 4.5 cents. They both turned around a bit. Spire down 8.9, a little better. ATP down 5, Smart Rent down 2, Sixteria down 22. Markets are trying to improve a little here and there. We're at 8.16 again on SoFi. We just jumped up again another 12, 13 cents in the last couple of minutes after touching 8.04 again, 8.05. 8.50 on Rocket Lab, up 11. Uh, it's not going down. Uh, Rocket Lab is traded 421 thou. High today, 858, though 831. We're at 847, up eight cents, interestingly, on Rocket Lab. So far, 814, the low, eight bucks. That is the official low, eight bucks today. Uh, 812 now on 8.7 million on SoFi. So that's 64, 65 million in selling has come in, maybe more. GameStop, 8738. AMC, 1328, down 103. It looks like AMC is better. It got to 12.92. It's now 13.33. So, AMC just recovered 41 cents of its loss in the last 10 minutes. Uh, still though, at 13.33, down 97 cents on 5.1 million. AMC is down on the day. Matterport unchanged. ME up eight and a half at 3.74. ME is climbing. Um, ME is traded 337,000. It's a high of the day. 374 and a half cents. Up eight and a half. It was down to 362. It's come back 12 cents uh, quickly on ME, uh, 374. Spire, 191 down 11. ATIP, 168 down 5.4. Unbelievable. Smart Rent, 621 up a penny. Uh, that turned around. And now Sixtera down nine cents at 1164. It was 1151. It just popped up 13 cents. It's only down a little here, nine cents now. Uh, smart rent 624 was as low as 609. It just jumped up here uh, 15 cents in five minutes. 38,000 shares traded on smart rent plus four. ATIP only down five cents. Spire still down a dime. ME now 375 up nine. Climbing again uh, 370,000. It's going straight up. 703 Matterport up two. Uh, GameStop 87.90, SoFi 8.26, a bounce of 26 cents from the low. We're still down 29 cents. SoFi volume now a 9.8 million, pushing 10 million shares in 14 minutes. That is 80 million of selling coming through here in 10 minutes. Uh, is it over? 
Is this it? Is this a recovery now? I don't know. 854 up 15 on Rocket Lab. Dow up 155. Uh, S&P up 12. NASDAQ up 2. The whole market has gone green again. Just boom. Just like that. These gyrations are coming through and we're trying to watch it. Crazy, man. It's crazy. Uh, let's go. What do you do, says Bobby? Um, hold out for 100 more shares under 7 or hold out for two $5 leaps for 2024 at 350 I met the CEO of NCL when I was a barista in South Florida. He really needed to let us know why he was driving such a fancy car. He really needed to let us know. Oh, okay, Adventure Duncan. Okay, um, Nicholas, 232 thumbs ups, man. When was the last time GameStop was this low? Uh, Mid-80s now. Olivia, I think quite literally February last year. It's crazy. Nicholas, uh, darn it. Uh, so fine. Why do you have to go to eight bucks? Now I have to eat ramen this week. Uh, Coyote, uh, Olivia, you're right. I was buying in the 40s, Feb 21, so it had to be around then. Olivia, I was buying too. Duncan, Coyote, hold a line. So Olivia really didn't like to, we, we'd see one sub 100 with GameStop ever again. I'm I'm okay with it though. She says, uh, Gertie, um, Uncle O, you know I am buying more. I'm buying more. Um, Anthony uh, got, got another 500 so far at 806. Bargoon. Uh, I keep saying Bargoon, so these must be the Bargoons of Bargoons. Uh, Gertie, hope it stays green. Austin turns out the analyst with an eight dollar target is a genius. There you go. Well, it's uh, 826 now, down 29 cents. 851 on Rocket Lab up 12. The Dow up 165. GameStop 8820 down 449. AMC 1339 down 91. Matterport 699 down 2 cents. ME at 375 up 9. Spires down 10 cents to 191. ATIP still down 5.7 cents. And Smart Rent is up 11 now to 6, oh, up 14 to 634. High of the day, 42,000 volume on Smart Rent. And it's up 14 cents. Six there down 15 cents to 11.58. Then the low is 11.51. Dow up 1.55 right now. SoFi 8.23, a 23 cent recovery from the low this morning. Austin, I'm number I'm number 239. Thumbs up for you, buddy. Thank you guys. Um, W2I is touching 100. 103.30, down 5.96. Um, Austin Goody, yo, she called it when she was about 20. That took some stones. Amazing. Uh, 8.20 on SoFi, down 34. Uh, 175 gain on the Dow. 8.50 on Rocket Lab, up 11. 88.28, GameStop down 441. Matterport down 8. ME up 8.5. Lots and lots and lots of crazy movement everywhere right now the the SP is up 12 points the nasdaq is up just two gold is down 20 bucks an ounce oil down six bucks a barrel 103.38 amazing 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 did anyone hear a dead cat meow anywhere maybe is anyone getting that right now oh boy i tell you kids there was a time it was a lot easier. It was the seventies. That's when I lived in my mom and dad's house, and uh, the freeze the fridge always had food in it. Oh gosh, you remember when mom used to come home from the grocery store, and she'd be loading up the fridge, and the kids would be kind of standing around going, "What are we gonna have?" <laughs> and then your mom would say, "Don't eat too much right now because you'll spoil yourself for dinner." Don't want to spoil dinner. Do you remember those chats we used to have with our parents? Uncle Bruce, can you please tell the market to decide what it wants to do? Orion is asking. Uh, Duncan, bottom was hit. Um, Nicholas, uh, that was just me. Sorry, it's okay. Yeah, you remember, you know, you, you're looking at the, I remember when my mom would come back from the deli, the delicatessen with all those cold cuts. <gasps> they wouldn't last a couple, only a couple of days. Cold cuts didn't last long because they would just disappear. It would evaporate in the thin air. The dark German rye bread with the cold cuts on it. Oh, man. God, I remember my dad would have uh, dark rye bread and schmaltz. Do you, know what, do you know what that is? Do you know what schmaltz is? I'll leave that as an open question. And uh, he put salt on it, on, sh on schmaltz. I mean, just to add to it. 
I wonder why my dad had heart problems. I wonder why that, why was that? It was, it would be smoking cigarettes, eating schmaltz on rye and having vodkas and beer. Why did that man have heart problems? I don't understand. He was so happy. Um, he was just loving it. I, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. Um, it's just me. Uh, uh, H. Gregory, Uncle Bruce, I finally bought back my $115 April 14th for GameStop. I sold these at $29 a piece. I just bought them back for $4 and 40 centinos. Thank you for your encouragement. Way to haul in a lovely 2000 What's that? $2,460 profit on a contract? Sweet, sweet deal, man. That's beautiful. Ryan, so what's a good trade today? Just buy this stuff? Bobby, uh, deli meat is a buy. Nicholas, wait, where, where's the plant? Um, uh, Gaiotti, Orion investing, buying shares, writing cash secure puts. Um, 99 Nation, the plan is to hold to the nearest hand in bravery and go thrift shopping. There you go. Uh, we are right now on the Dow uh, up 175. Rocket Lab is at 862. It's up 23 cents. Rocket Lab is going up. SoFi 824 down 31. We were down to eight dollars. GameStop we're over 90. 9033 down 236. AMC 1381 only down 49 cents. AMC is coming on. Matterport, 695 down 6. ME up 8.5. Spire down 12. ATIP down a nickel. Smart rent up 14. Six Terra down 13. Uh, Microsoft is up 320. Apple today is down 174 to 152.99. It's getting towards the high of the day here on Apple. 153.30 is the high. Uh, the, anything over 153.54 might be option writing time on Apple. Write 155s for this Friday, 155s this Friday or next Friday or the Friday after that, taking as much premium as you can out of the money and see if it pops back to 145 this week due to production delays in China. Yes, see what's going on. Um, yeah, thank you, my man. Way to go, H. Gregory. Way to go, buddy. Glad to see you making money. Um, what is it? What is it? So what is it? Uh, revisited Spire's business, and I'm so buying the space company, says Angel. I'm so buying this. 600,000 games up volume before nine. It's decent. Isn't that decent? Uh, well, let's take a look here. It did get low. You know, when it gets this low, it attracts interest. 633,000, you know, it's back to 89.80 here, down 289. There was a dip there. Uh, Dow is up 163. Rocket Lab up 14 to 854. SoFi back to 808. Opportunity knocks on SoFi. Volume 12.5 million. That means 100 million of trading has gone through in dollars. SoFi. Herb, thank you, buddy, for that PayPal donation. You are the man. I uh, love seeing you make money. I just love Way to go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Keeping me on the air here. Bama, Baba, was that Baba stock was down 77, down to 77. Um, Gaiotti, SoFi, come down hard. 808 just hit, 8, uh, 812 right now on SoFi. 100 million shares, dollars of selling. 100 million dollars of selling is coming on SoFi in 23 minutes. That's what I think is going on here. Uh, someone's getting wiped out. Of 12 million shares. That's a chunk. That is a chunk. Someone's got caught on something. I don't know what else they're selling. Are there other shares they're selling to get out of their jam? I don't know. But so far, down to $8. Now at 8, 8, 8, 10 right now, down 45. The Dow up 153 and holding. SP up 10. Holding. NASDAQ down 11, so two of three or higher. 103.14 on oil down, 619 a barrel. Wow, just, just running into a buzz soft selling. Unbelievable. You know what? Jen and I have been here a week and a half. Uh, we got here a week ago Thursday. I still don't have Welch's grape jelly. i got to get over to a safe ways and see if they have any. It's unbelievable. I can't find Welch's anywhere. Uh, Smuckers, how much Smuckers do you want? I don't want Smuckers. I don't want that. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Bobby, uh, read over the weekend, or read over the weekend, American banks got $121 billion to hit due to Russia. That's going to hurt a few stocks. It's possible. 
Coyote, I will keep catching these falling knives because I'm a <laughs> masochist and I love the pain. Um, remember, though, U.S. banks, uh, they have a lot of insurance. Uh, they use, uh, they use uh, third parties to buy insurance on their holdings. And I can imagine that in the last six months, with all the nonsense in Russia, they have been buying insurance everywhere and they're covered. So don't be surprised if American banks actually don't write off that much. It sounds bad. But it isn't bad. It'll take three to six months to settle it all out, but they'll be fine. Uh, we're up 173 on the Dow. That is a that is an okay day. Um, now we're up 145, 149. We're ahead and holding. Okay. Um, <clears throat> S&P up 10. And NASDAQ down 7.8. There it is. Uh, Rocket Lab up 12 cents. SoFi 816. 39 cents lower. Not going below 8 at this point. It went there. Came back to 820, went down to 805, came back up here, went back down to 805, 808, back up here, 816. What is happening on SoFi? Volume now, 13.3 million. That is uh, $110 million of selling in 25 minutes. Hmm, how much more is coming in? I do new. I'll do new. Up 170 on the Dow. Gabe's up 89.01. Matterport, 692. ME up 2.5. Pennies to 368. Spire down 12 cents. ATIP down 6. Smart Rent down a penny. Six Terra up 19. Smart Rent was up a little bit here. It got to 638. That was 20 cents ago. Uh, it gave it all back. Uh, 61,000 volume, though. Like, we got nothing here. Oh, the Dow just popped over 200. Right now up 190. It just had a 206 gain here. So we're, we're going higher. Uh, Rocket Lab up six. We'll see if it filters into the stocks we follow. Uh, SoFi 810, 8903 on GameStop. So we'll see if this green is going to spread its wings across some more. Thank you, H. Gregory. Uh, let's see here. Oh, my gosh. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Here, kitty kitty says 19 nation. Coyote, I have sub $8 bids for SoFi. We shall see. Charlie, Putin had to dump his SoFi holdings to buy more gas and bombs. There you go. 153, 182 gain on the Dow. We just jumped 30 points on a computer buy program coming in here. Uh, we're up just a penny on Rocket Lab. 840. It's getting, it was getting hit with some selling. 806 on SoFi. Getting hit again. 8 06 on SoFi, 13.8 million. We hit 15 million volume. That's 120 million of selling coming in in dollars on SoFi. On SoFi, yeah, that's a lot of money. Games up 88.20. AMC still down 91 cents. Matterport down 16. ME down two and a half cents. So there's some mixed results this morning coming through with the Dow up, S&P up, NASDAQ down 45 points. Uh, amazing, amazing, amazing. Amazing. Um, yep, 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 yep. Ugly Marcus says, Coyote, it's unpredictable. It is really going through the gyrations. There's volatility here, kids. There's volatility. On uh, Apple right now, we're down 255 to 152.18. Microsoft up 278 to 282.85. Goldman down 51 cents, now down 74 cents to 326. Cisco up 4 cents. Facebook up 146. Amazon up 270 a share. Tesla down 18 bucks. Google down $20 to 2589. Uh, 188 gain, 189 gain on the Dow, now 191. Green on the Dow, red on our stocks. That's what I see here. 806 on SoFi. Bargoon. Yes, um, it is so wild that my ticker is trouble seeing, uh, staying accurate. Starting to tap the screen here, going, "What? What's with you guys?" Uh, Austin, I got a stink bid, seven fifty one for a thousand shares of SoFi. I'm in there. Come on, give them to me. I dare you. Eight oh eight, last trade. Eight twelve now, last trade on SoFi. It's jumping around. Dow up one eighty eight. Now S and P up ten. Nasdaq down thirty six. <sighs> wacky, wacky morning, guys. Just. 217 on the Dow. Just went up 30 more points. We just went from 150 to 217 in three minutes. That's 60 points in three minutes. Like, there it is.
Here, um, Uncle Bruce, you said 155 for Apple right for this week. So what I'm looking for this week, next week, or the week after. Yeah, take as much premium as you can for out of the money apples, out of the money apples right down here because this production thing could interfere with the stock. 152.45 on the stock, down 228 on Apple, and I think 145 is in the wheelhouse this week. That's my hunch. That's my my guess, my hunch. Microsoft up 297, 283. You know what? 285s to 290s. You might have to write those and look for a 275 price on, on Microsoft this week. That's possible. Uh, if this market doesn't want to go, it's possible. Um, Home Depot up 240. IBM down 37 cents. Goldman still down 68 cents, man. Man, oh, man, oh, man. Uh, 177 on the Dow, still gaining. Credit Savage, holy moly, those 2250 covered call leaps I wrote for SoFi a few weeks ago, I got 249 for those. They're at 101 right now. Time to buy back. Could be a good buy. That could be a very good buy to buy back right now. Yeah, 810 on the stock. Amazing. Dow up 191. Uh, 830 on Rocket Lab, down 9 cents. We got SoFi at 810, down 45 cents. Uh, GameStop, 188.89. Trying to get back to 89 a share here, down 3. My, oh my, my, oh my, 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 my. Crazy markets. Wow, just crazy. Holy moly is right. Up 198 on the Dow, 7 on S&P, down 49 on NASDAQ. It's a mixed bag. Oil down 650 to 102.80. We're coming back down to that 100 level on oil. That would be good for the markets. That would be good. Uh, 809 on SoFi. Still cheap. Yeah, 89.62 on games. I came through 89 like a hot knife through soft butter. 89.50 wants to go to 90. So GameStop wants to go to 90. Let's see. ME just got to be unchanged again. It fought its way back to 366. Um, interesting. Smart rent down a penny. It wants to go higher. ME just went green. One and a half cents on the green side. 588,000 low. 362. That was this morning in the first 10 minutes. We have not hit a new low on ME. Now it's up now to 368. It's climbing again. 376 is the high today on ME. E. We're up 233 on the Dow. We're climbing. We're at the high of the day on the Dow. S&P up 16. That might be the high of the day. S&P down only 13. That might be the best level. Although I thought we were positive a little bit. It's it's improving. Okay. I got uh, 786 SoFi stink bid, and I'm sitting here like I'm hypnotized, like how kids stare into holiday lights. I'm there, baby. 816 on SoFi, up 245 on the Dow. It's almost like GameStop and SoFi are one another 10 to 1. They're like 10 to 1. 90 on GameStop, 90 40. GameStop is coming on again. SoFi 816, Rocket Lab down only a penny. Rocket Lab's about to go green. 838, watch that. We're up three on ME. We're green again. We're only down three on Smart Rent. Come on, market. Oh, look at that Dow up 254. High of the day. Looking good. Yeah. You know, between the virus and the economy, China is going to get crushed. Now, let's add the warning the USA State Department just gave them if they provide Russia with economic or arms relief, they'll be sanctioned. Up 235 on the Dow. S&P up 15. NASDAQ down only 10. Oil down seven dollars and fifteen cents to one hundred two twenty. Oil is dropping fast. Might be breaking a hundred today. It could happen. Oh my gosh! Two thirty-seven gain on the Dow here. Rocket Lab down a penny. Eight twenty-one on SoFi coming back. Ninety seventy-eight. We're going for ninety-one on GameStop. We're going for it. Matterport is green. That's a 702. I just saw it. ME is up three. It just went green. Uh, Smart Rent only down three cents. Can all of it go green? It's possible. We might go green across the board. Lots of green on the on the edge of greenness. We're on the edge of greenness. Oh my God. <laughs> 
Oh boy, again, any strength on Apple is your opportunity to write contracts. 152.38 now, Apple down 233. The high of the day, 153.32. So this Apple wants to break 153 on this little run up. Take the opportunity to short it or write calls on it. Um, we might be 145 this week. Uh, we'll see how this plays out. This could affect the second quarter Apple numbers and others. Uh, 196 gain on the Dow here, just slipping a little bit. So if I 818 right now, all right, Bobby, Uncle, a U.S. mega business will not like China sanctions. If it goes that way, there goes all the labor sailing on a sea of green. I did read this morning that um, Yum Brands, which is the company that owns KFC, can, can, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken in China having problems, inflation problems, lower demand. Lockdowns are screwing with Yum's business over there big time. They are really getting hit. Sales uh, are not coming in as expected on Yum Yum brands, China. So that is more issue more issues there. Uh, on the first run up of SoFi, I had an average of fourteen twenty, and I thought that was a bargain. I'm now at sixty five hundred shares with an average of nine sixty two. Just being patient and waiting for the catapult, man. Anthony, you are going to do really well. You are going to make a fortune on this thing. Uh, 182 is the gain on the Dow. We're down two cents on Rocket Lab. So far, 824 down 31. That's coming up actually. Uh, GameStop 9047 down 222. Uh, Matterport down eight cents. ME up three and a half. Uh, Anthony, you're going to get rich on this stuff. It's going to be great. What a day, says Splair. I, I, I walk through the street, listen to Uncle Bruce. Suddenly, Maybe an 18-year-old girl asks for a cigarette. I told her that I only have a lighter. Then two minutes later, suddenly, a policeman runs after her. What is going on? Oh, my gosh. I tell you, Splitter, I have no idea. Um, 177 gain on the Dow right now. Rocket Lab down a penny. It wants to go green. It wants to go green. So far, 822, up 22 cents from the low of the day, still down 34 cents. Game's up, 90-23, hanging in there. Um, we have, so far, 263 thumbs ups, I thank you. And we have 409 people answering the poll question this morning, which is, by the end of this week, Game's up will be over or under $100 a share. Earnings come out Thursday. Will the shares go over 100 by the end of the week or under 49% say it's over. 51% say it'll be under. 411 votes have come in. Thank you for participating with the thumbs ups and the poll question. Thank you. At least I was going on with Uncle Bruce. Uh, yeah, you, you're innocent of all charges. You're just listening to me. We're up to 203 points on the Dow again. We're climbing on the Dow. Rocket Lab's about to go green, only down a penny. Oh, my, 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 my. Will it go green everywhere? Matterport down only three cents. ME up three and a half. Um, so far, 820. Oh, my goodness. Good good morning, by the way, y'all. I, I say it goes over. It's all good, Splair. Um, nice to have you here and glad you didn't get arrested. <laughs> glad, you didn't, glad you didn't get taken to jail. 228-point uh, gain on the Dow now, climbing again. Look at Rocket Lab, up eight. Up eight cents to three eight forty seven. Just shot through there. There's buying coming in on Rocket Lab. So far eight twenty looks looks like it might go. Will will it will, will it ninety forty eight on GameStop. Uh, the market is going higher. Two forty five on the Dow. Seventeen on S and P. We're up nine on Nasdaq. It's going green green green. We're at one hundred two thirty on oil. Going down on oil. Up the markets. Up a dime on on Rocket Lab now. Eight. 46 a share on Rocket Lab. We're pushing 850 here. We're up 250 on the Dow. It's this market's going higher. It, it's just going to go higher. Um, ATIP still on six. Spire down at 11. Smart ran up a nickel. It just went green again. Six there, only down 12 cents. Wow. Uh, Apple down 169 to 153.04. Coming into that range where you might be able to write 155 call options on Apple. If you have poor man covered call strategies here, that could be a thing, you know. 
Oh my, 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 my. Uh, what is going to happen here? 153.03 on Yapple. The calls that expire this Friday, 155s. I'm not even showing them. I'm showing 152s at 320. I'm showing 157.50s at 102. Uh, the 155 has got to be somewhere. I mean, they can't not exist. Next week, 155s are showing 3 to 305. The week after, that would be April 1s. They've got to be showing here 4 bucks on the 155. So, you know, you can get over 4, 3.5, 4 or more for, you know, the next week or two. That might be a nice little trade for you on Apple. Uh, let's see. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the show. Uh, we are now up 246 on the Dow Jones. Rocket Lab, 848, up 9 cents. 820 on SoFi. GameStop hanging on to 90. Uh, Matterport at 7 bucks, down a penny. Emmy up 2.5. Spire down 11, ATIP down 6, Smart Rent up 3. There you go. Oh, my, my, my. And Jennifer is here. Hi, Jen. Hello. How are you? I am so dry. I, I have to keep greasing up. Yeah, I hear you. We're back in Alberta. Baby. We're in Alberta and we're at <laughs> Elevation and it is dry. It is dry here. Oh. It's drier here than it is in Palm Desert. <laughs> Can you believe that? Um, I believe it. I um, have more humidity because we're at altitude. We're at altitude. We're at thirty-eight hundred feet. Uh, yeah, right thinner now. air and uh, and uh, drier. My hands are peeling and my legs don't even go there. Ugh. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> um nation 99 nation videos is saying uh, no who's saying this nicholas wti oil is under 100. i'm oh. still showing 102 on on the, the oil let me double check though i could i could be wrong could be i still got it at 102 here but it, it's awful close to collapsing under 100 oh. down seven that's bucks. interesting yeah yeah americans are using less everybody's using they're less. listening to me they're using less oil we're up 267 I, I, think on everybody is. I think so too in we canada did it too. back in 08 and Using less oil. Using less. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And winter is over. Uh, yeah. So the heating oil isn't needed. And, as much as, yeah, natural yeah. gas too. Hopefully natural gas will drop. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Well, bagel time. Yeah. What should I have on my bagel time? I know. We, we have to uh, we have to find you. Something. Welch's. I, talk, I was just talking about this 10 minutes ago. We, we, Smuckers is everywhere. Uh, I don't want Smuckers. I want Welch's. So I got to get to Safeway. See Aren't if I can find I was uh, this morning, but then I cooled off, and it's no. very foggy outside. Yes, the it's, whole city is oh, oh, it's just a depressing looking. And right of here. course, it's it's an hour darker than it normally is. For there me. are no fairways or greens or bunkers anywhere around no. here. No hot tubs here. Nobody well, driving golf carts we around have here. Lots of golf courses in the city, but not right now. No one's golfing anywhere. No one's yeah. indoors. What's with that? 36 degrees with the high yesterday. No one's golfing. Around. I bet you they're going to start golfing this week. Though, if we, nice we get out. the upper 50s and 60s, watch Those out. Those winter greens. It's soon to come. They don't have winter greens in Palm Desert. I won't be one of the golfers. Uh, I won't be one of those. I'll just be watching going, look at those idiots golfing over there. Uh, we're up 291 on the Dow. We're climbing I here. Know. We're climbing on the Dow. Let's go. Look at the S&P and NASDAQ. They're up nicely. We're up 29 on S&P. We're up 60 on NASDAQ. Let's go up with all our stocks now. Okay? I mean, geez. Here we go. Down, down, here we go. Here we go. No. When does the <laughs> Scotties tournament start? Uh, probably in a week. No, this no. Week? We've had the Scotties. Sorry. We've, we've had the Scotties um, in about a week. About a week, I want to say. Because we have a week off. But the Women's World. The will Women's be held World. In St. Albert, George, Peter, somebody. I, <laughs> I think it's St. George in BC. There's more curling coming. Don't worry. The world's well, women's championship, yes. the men's worlds are coming. Yes. Oh, don't worry. We'll be able to talk to you about curling for months. Months. Well, well not months. Well, if we want to talk panties and skins, yeah. We can do that. Oh, my God. It we never could, we could talk, Have you talked about the 46-year-old Ever Ready Bunny? I don't understand why. I don't know what he wants 
from this. Oh, Tom Brady. Except, You're talking about Tom Brady coming back for another season. Except ah. maybe another, what, 10, 12, 40 million dollars? I, I don't know how much. I, I, don't, I don't know. How much is enough? When's enough? Yeah. enough? I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. All this talk about spending time with his family. Maybe he spent like a month with them and they were had going enough. like, ooh. I've had enough of this family. Yeah. Yeah. Let's wait for another year for the kids to get a year older. Then I'll spend more time with them. Maybe he's It's like the military families who miss their spouse so terribly when they're off on assignment. Yeah. But then they come back and they try to run the house. And you're like, not a good idea. I do really well without you for six months of the year. So you just go sit on the couch and we'll be all fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The, the successful military families are the ones where the dad comes home and does everything the wife tells him to do. That's right. Or he the keeps, wife comes home he and keeps the dad tells him. Taking yeah. orders uh, willingly. Yeah. yeah, or the wife. You know, yeah. Well, the wife taking orders. That's a tough one. That's, you know. Well, because she knows she can do better. So that's harsh. <laughs> what is good good for the goose is not necessarily good for the gander. You know yeah. what I'm saying here, yeah, kids? Ah, uh, uh, we're up 294 on the Dow. This is looking good. I had a full pump of cream. No, I'm not touching. Not, no, I'm not touching they're dry already. I'm not you touching know. those hands. You can probably hear that all the way through the internet. How uh, sad. How sad. You have to take a bath in conditioner. Oh yeah. my gosh, tough times. It is. You're sleeping with a snake. I tell you, it's not pretty. Good thing you go to sleep in the dark. <laughs> too much information, I think. There's there's a little too much information. It's, uh, Rocket Lab's up a quarter. Is it? 864. Excellent. Still at 824 on SoFi. We hit eight bucks this morning on SoFi. That, it's now 824. That's that's one of the things where you just have to give your head a shake. Uh, no. World, give your head a Ga shake. GameStop was 86. It's now 90. GameStop, 86. It was now 90. $86. Yeah, it's now 90. I, I was trying I, to process uh, what uh, you were saying. Uh, 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 Eighty six dollars. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. Uh, Matterport's up and ME is up, uh, but Spire and ATIP still down. Smart rents up a dime. Six star down twelve cents. But yeah, yeah. So we heard today Apple's got issues. What's wrong with Apple? Um, the factory in China. Uh, yeah. Some of uh, there's a number of factories. I think that's all you needed to say. A couple of them have been shut down because of, because COVID, of the COVID. The Omicron yeah. cities I was just are hearing that on the radio. That yeah. It, there's more shutdown right now uh -huh. for the Omicron variant, which I, I want them to just give a nice short name like Joe. Just call it Joe. Call it Joe. Instead of the Omicron variant. Could we have something with one syllable? Joe was yeah. making China shut down. Joe's Joe. making China shut down. Steve. Steve's Steve. Nice Steve. Kid. Steve did it. Steve would never hurt you. Steve would never hurt from you. From over the hedge. He's a great guy. Steve. 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 <laughs> or from Multiplicity. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. I like pizza. I like pizza in my <laughs> wallet. Oh, yes. I we'll love that. As he's shaving. Is that safe? Oh, we took the blades. We, we took, took the blades out. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I love Michael Keaton. He's, he's just Brilliant. a great actor. He's Batman. He's just, Michael I, Keaton. I am Batman. Is, he is Batman. He is Batman. He is Batman. Yeah. There you go. Except now I think it's the Batman. The Batman. The Catwoman. The Catwoman. I, I don't know. I think Michelle Pfeiffer made a pretty good looking cat one. Hey, white gold. But so was Eartha. Pfeiffer. Eartha Kitt wasn't so bad. And Lee Merriweather was voice, okay. Right? Eartha Kitt. Well, she had the kid. Yeah. I remember I remember when Batman the movie came out in 1965. I was 10, 11. Oh, starting to explore thoughts. Uh, and well, no, it came out in 66, 67. So I was 11, 12. And then they had Catwoman on that movie. <laughs> 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 Tell you, as a thirteen-year-old boy watching that kind of stuff, introduced a whole. I'd like to see that movie again. Uh, I want to see that movie again. Um, <laughs> let, can that we was, see that movie again? Uh, that was my nephews used to watch Dukes of Hazard all the time when they were little, and then it was replayed. And my eighteen, nineteen-year-old nephew said to me, "Were her shorts always that short?" <laughs> like, yeah, but you were eight. You didn't. Know, you, you didn't notice as an eight-year-old, <laughs> but as a fourteen-year-old, yeah, you're certainly yeah, noticing how short. You're certainly noticing <laughs> something about those shorts, aren't you, young man? Yes. What? What? Yeah. What? What's? Whoa. That's why they call them Daisy Dukes. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. You ever watch? Uh, you ever watch uh, any kind of a clip on YouTube about uh, I Dream of Jeannie? You don't see her navel. 
No. It, it's it, not bizarre. Check it out because they got the they got the bottom in such a way that you can't see that they've covered her up somehow with like a mesh or something. I know. No navel. It's you can't so, see. It's no. craziness. Yeah. A oh, it's wild. Something it, we all have. Wild, it's like wild. nipples. We all have. Oh no, no, we don't. No, we all don't. No, no. Women have different kinds of nipples than men do. Yeah. Well, and some trans don't have nipples. <laughs> They're part of the no nipple club. Yeah. No nipple club. Okay, well, let's not go there. Oh gosh. So on that thought. Cheese whiz. Cheese whiz. Let's do cheese whiz today. I Toast think to cheese. Cheese whiz has supplanted jelly. That's well, your number one favorite. I'm, I'm stuck here, here so. Here. I'll do the. I'll do that. Okay. Cheese whiz. Enough nipple talk. Let's go to cheese whiz. Leave, can you leave that open for a little bit? Yeah. Because it lets some air in here. I'll do this. Too. Look at the Dow. We're up three hundred four. The Dow is up three hundred and four points. And S and P is up uh, twenty six. Nasdaq is up forty five. This is good. Uh, we're at one hundred one on uh, on oil. Down eight bucks a barrel. Good. More good. Yeah, this is gooder. Um, yeah, okay. Oh, geez. Uh, what is going to happen here? Oh, my God. The the bagel bearer cometh, says Nation. <laughs> Good morning, Jen. Howdy, Auntie Jen. Good to hear your cheerful voice. Hello, Jen. Uh, Jen, you, you get an open inv invitation, a nice air over here, you know. Nicholas, Tom Brady has one more record to beat. Brett Favre's coming out of retirement record. Good morning, Jen. This is the reversal. I was talking about Friday. There it is. Uh, Clay, hasn't Tom Brady been in just one more season mode for like 10 years? This player, for real, the market is open since, what, 45 minutes? Change in time again in the USA. Yep. Spring ahead on Sunday. Got to save that candle money. Damn, there's always two weeks earlier than the year. <clears throat> uh, Delta Cron is a new variant on the block, and it seems to be springing up everywhere. Isn't he the France one? What, what does that mean? I have no idea. Um, Kryptonite next variant. Um, Yippee-ki-yay, Halle Berry. Yes, yeah, she was okay. Um, uh, that may be why my NBO sucks beating the market all week. Uh, oh, my God, says 99 Nations. Uh, why settle for no nip when you can have four? God, you two are making me blush. No nipple talk. Alexander, given GameStop earnings on 317, should we sit out this week for writing new calls? What should we do? We got to make money, man. We got to make money. Two eighty nine is the gain on the Dow. Uh, Rocket Lab eight sixty four up twenty four cents. That's a nice turnaround. SoFi eight nineteen still not going anywhere yet. Uh, SoFi volume now is uh, twenty million. So we've got one hundred sixty million dollars of selling come through today. Someone's got problems. Uh, GameStop uh, eighty nine ten. AMC thirteen ninety five. Still down 35 cents. Trying to get back to 14 if it'll hold it. 10.8 million volume. This is near the high of the day for AMC. This is near its high of the day. Uh, Matterport, 698 down 3. ME up 4.5 cents. Spire down 12 cents. ATIP down 5. Smart rent up 18 now. That's a high of the day. Six, eight, 642, 630. This is kind of the high of the day. We're down 17 on Sextera right now. My, oh, my, 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 my. Microsoft up 456. Apple still down 139 to 153.34. Getting close to option writing territory. If not, they're all ready. Goldman up two bucks. Coming back. Got to get to 335, 340. Come on, Goldman. Cisco up 20 cents. Facebook up 368. Amazon up $12. Tesla down 32 cents. Google down seven bucks. So it's a moderating kind of a day. We're up, we're up 294 on the Dow now. Oh my gosh, is SoFi going to go up or down? It's at 822, down 34 cents. Where is that buy wave coming from? Um, you remember when Matterport and SoFi were fighting for $15 a share? I remember that. Dave, can you explain what you mean by someone has problems with the heavy selling on SoFi? I think there is uh, a hedge fund or a group of hedge funds that have problems with uh, derivative trades elsewhere. They're getting slammed on losses and they need to raise cash. And they have shares of SoFi to sell. Like it or not, they're selling now at eight twenty, eight bucks. They're losing money, but not as much money on the other positions. And they're using SoFi as a cash cow to bail themselves out of other problems. And uh, um, SoFi did raise two point four 
billion dollars at ten dollars a share when they went public so that's 240 million shares distributed among uh, SPAC investors and uh, pipe financers. And I think this is where the stock is coming from. Pipe financers at 10 are getting hit hard, forced to sell stock. That's what I think is going on. It's not a SoFi, the bank is having a problem problem. It's not having that problem. It's growing. It's the shareholders who have problems. They need to sell something to raise money. Dave, uh, Apple will weather the storm more than most. Their main revenue streams aren't hardware. Scott, y'all seen my car keys? I haven't seen them since Friday afternoon. I've looked everywhere hoping one of you might have seen my car keys. Nicholas, uh, uh, false. Uh, they're still in a race to 25, just not going that well. Uh, Dave, uh, Scott, did you look at the last place you left them? That might be where they are. Sam, well, my prediction on the stock market, SPX needs to break 4265. 4285 breaking those levels should lead to a reset at 4340 then 4360 4400 the rest of the market will follow see you follow that you got it made it's so simple it, it, sam wells got it all figured out thank you uh the dow's up 340. uh i think we just need more buyers and sellers uh, that's my thinking is more buyers and sellers in a hurry to buy and sellers are not in a hurry to sell we go up and we're up 340 on the dow we're up 32 on s p we're up 73 on nasdaq that's how i think this market can go and it wants to go because it's oversold and we're now 864 on rocket lap more buyers and sellers we're at 822 on so far more sellers and buyers but we were down to eight we're now at 822 so maybe you know maybe we can pop gamestop back to 90 again 90 18 a share down 251 amc broke 14 1408 on amc this is pushing the high today of 1415 amc is pushing its high of the day around right now so that's a good sign for gamestop okay uh matterport at seven bucks down a penny me is up six spire at 190 down 12 atip down five cents only smart rent now up 20 cents to 640 six there down 20 so you know we're, we're close 330 point gain on the dow let's go let's go up uh, and said uncle Bruce, some time ago i was rolling a gamestop position to 120 bucks expire on the 25th can i buy back at 175 i sold 21 yes you shall buy back you shall buy back now well done well done yes indeed beautiful job Hey, guys, I'm back from my stinky, uh, well, okay. Bama, I feel like I'm betting on two leaders to find a peace agreement. If they do not, stocks go down. If they do, stocks go up. Weird feeling. Scott, yes, I looked there. I might have to sell an option to get a new one. Poor man's Chevy fob. Gosh darn it. Where is those? Where are those keys? I don't know. Mm, 321. 321 point gain on the Dow. And uh, 29 on S&P and 46 on NASDAQ. Oil at one hundred dollars and seventy eight cents, down eight fifty nine. Oh my gosh, gosh, gosh! Amazing, just amazing what's going on here. Well done, Z Estates BC. Way to go, buddy. Way to go. That is nice. Selling at, selling at. Uh, to, what would you sell that thing for? Twenty one bucks and buying it less than two, a nineteen hundred dollar profit way to go i just love seeing customers viewers making money i love it it's great it's great it's great it's great it's great we're up 315 on the dow 862 on rocket lab we now need a sofi buy wave to kick in here that's what we need and a few other things uh yes yes that's right thank you for the 286 thumbs ups Thank you to the 455 people who have answered my poll question today. Uh, by the end of the week, GameStop will be over 100 or under 100 bucks a share. 49% 49 say it's going to be over. 51% say it's going to be under. 455 total votes. That's pretty good. Pretty good participation. Thank you, everybody. 287 thumbs ups. Thank you for that, you guys. A real nice, uh, nice shot of thumbs ups today. Much appreciated. Okay. Go markets go. One hundred dollars fifty one cents a barrel. One hundred dollars forty five cents a barrel. Oil coming down. 
below 100 here. Could be good news at the pump for you guys. Boy, oh boy. What a great president you have. Biden getting oil down $30 a barrel in two weeks. This guy is a miracle worker. I didn't. I never saw Trump get oil down $30 in two weeks. Of course, I never saw Obama do it either. Uh, kind of curious. Wow, that, that's one of the greatest presidents of all time. See how I'm stirring the pot? Uh, see, th there, there you go. <laughs> oh, man. Scott, yes, I looked there. I might have to sell an option to get a new one. All righty. Thank you, Jen. Oh, we got... we the got floating bagel. The floating bagel. The, the cheese whiz toasted bagel. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jen. You're welcome. This is good stuff. Well, we're I holding a... Well, yeah, you know, but yeah, it'll change. I won't be wearing this much longer if it's 50s and 60s soon. That's true. You know? Mm. Oh, so good. Mm. 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 <laughs> Just paid three sixty four a gallon for premium at Costco. Down 20 cents since the last time I got gas. Yep. Bruce has a PhD in pot stirring. Kareem, 422.90 for 12.35. Good deal. Um, 4.22. That's uh, April 22.90. Hmm. No. Nah. Nah. You can always do a rollover if you're wrong, but you're still out in five weeks. Too much time. Too much time. Come closer in. Them, them there are called whiz wheels in the south. Um, oh, if oil stays down, I may have filled my tank at the very top. Um, yeah, Karim is thinking GameStop. I am too. Uh, political pot stirring with Uncle Bruce. Um, Nick's now that was funny. <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. As someone from a country that produces high quality dairy products, talk of cheese whiz makes me want to vomit. Buy real cheese. We do, but we also have our little vices. We love the cheese food from time to time. What can I say? So far, 809, 810. Mm. Here we go. SoFi News. Noto, CEO, had to file with the SEC. He bought another 16,000 shares. I remember when he used to file, he would buy 7,000 shares. They were like more than double the price of where we are now. They were like $17, $19. Now he's buying 16,000 at a time. He's buying them up.
Mm. Is this spray cheese? No. American cheese was different than the real cheese was in Canada, way up, better way up north. Come on, Sofi, you need a 786 vacation for just a few minutes. <laughs> Uncle Bruce, you skipped my question. Can you explain short selling for us now that you have a better understanding of the market? Might make more sense now. Well, you know, selling stock is like writing an option. Uh, shorting stock is like writing an option. You sell something now, buy it back later at a lower price. Of course, if you sell stock, you need the stock to go down. You sell a contract that has a time premium on it, the time itself can make it go down. That's a double win for you as an option writer. Much more conservative, much safer. Mm -mm -mm. Three hundred six gain on the Dow. Three hundred six points. Very good. Mm. Hitting the spot. I'll tell you. Oh boy. Three twenty seven gain on the Dow. Mm. Mm. Very good. Zeta State is saying, Uncle Bruce, when I sold my GameStop at 121, I was doing this as a defensive move because of a rollover. So it wasn't all profit. That's true. But now that you're buying it back for less than $2, it is complete capital recovery, 19 bucks a pop, which is really impressive. William, uh, note of the one, the one man buyback program. He's just buying back that stock. CEOs have better insights of a company that they are running. So if Noto's buying, then I'm buying, says Nick. Uh, Zed, uh, you, Uncle Bruce bought the contract back. Do we write a covered call? Right now, you just sit tight. Let's see if the market wants to get back over into the 90s. If the stock wants to get into the 93, 95 range, you're right in 100. So keep an eye on that. Nick, the good thing is I do not have to file with the SEC. That's right, Nick. So good night. Uh, me and so far are heading to penny territory. Um, Credit Savage. Anthony Eno is about to own 2% of the total shares available for so far. That should tell us what we need to know. He's using his own capital no one knows his this company like he does i think he knows something i would say uh i think he will go back to 100 when the oil prices are going down that's possible too pickle it's all possible we're up 326 on the dow right now rocket lab 862 up 23 so far still at 810 down 45. Hmm. <laughs> so good Mm. 
Oh boy. Here's a good question. Is there a formula used to calculate time value shrinkage on a covered call? Hmm. I'm almost done this big. I'll answer this question in a sec. Oh, oh yeah. Look at the Dow. Up 359. Mm. Cheers to all of you. Oh, boy, that's good. Oh. It's a good question here. Is there a formula used to, is used to calculate time value shrinkage? Uh, you know, Bama Babe, I don't use any established um, measuring tools that are out there. Re really, I really don't. All I do, it's old school. I mean, it's just old school. If I'm looking at GameStop and I can write a call for this Friday with a $90 strike price or an $89 strike price, right where the shares are now, there's a certain premium. I just I, I know what that is. I see it trading there. Uh, I I then I then do a very simple calculation in my mind and go, okay, well, if the uh, premium on a contract, say for a ninety, well, I'm looking here at ninety, was six fifty to six ninety a little while ago, and eighty nine is showing six sixty to seven fifty. So, if I'm going to use a, a six fifty to seven dollar value for a contract. That dies this Friday. That's an at-the-money contract. I just divide this contract number, the, this value of this contract, say seven bucks or seven seventy-five, six seventy-five, six fifty. I divide it into four or five days. Obviously, a contract that dies Friday, this Friday, uh, this being Monday morning, we have four and three-quarter days to go, sort of. Um, over the weekend, it was quite possible that the the um, ninety three dollar contract that was an at the money contract Friday night, it was possible that that contract was showing seven dollars, and so you divide that by five days and you come up with a buck forty a day. And there's my formula that this contract will lose approximately a dollar forty a day in time value if the shares don't change in price. Now, look, if the 93s or 94s were seven bucks Friday night, right now, the last time I saw them trade, they were at 475 to 545. So around five something is what they're worth now. They've dropped two bucks since Friday night. Combination of two things. One, <clears throat> one day of time, trading time, that we're into now, the real reason, the number two reason, really, the stock is down $3.69. So a lowering value of the stock has lowered the uh, value of these contracts because it's put them out of the money. A $93 contract is no longer in the money anymore. It's now $4 out of the money. So you're going to get that, all right? But 
on average, if the shares are 89 tomorrow, the 89s are going to have lost a buck 40 more in time value. That's all built into the trading and depreciation shrinkage of these contracts. By Wednesday, they'll lose another dollar 40, Tuesday, dollar 40, Thursday, dollar 40. Every day, they will lose, lose, lose value. So if you're comparing contract quotes this morning to contract quotes Wednesday afternoon and then Friday, a guy all on the expiry of this Friday's expiry, you're going to notice that these contract values are shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. Even a contract $5 out of the money right now compared to a contract $5 out of the money Friday morning, you're going to see a dramatic difference in price. Shrinkage for sure. The catch is, of course, if you write an $89 contract right now, will the shares be at $89 on Friday? What if they're at $99 on Friday? You might receive a $7 premium right now for an $89 contract. But the shares are trading at $99 on Friday. Those contracts have a book value of $10. But you only received 7 for the contract. Now, you've lost $3 on the contract if you buy it back around 10 bucks because it'll trade at about its book value as Friday rolls along, along, and along. Uh, you'll lose $3 on the contract. Good news, your stock's up 10 bucks. So you're $10 richer on your stock in your account, but you lost 300 on the option you wrote against it. Of course, you'll do a rollover. You will buy back the said $89 contract that you wrote for 12 for seven bucks you'll buy it back for whatever it's trading for it's trading probably at three dollars because it sorry no it, you will not buy it back for three dollars I apologize you wrote an 89 and the stock's at 99 you're gonna buy it back for 10 10 50 you're gonna lose three 350 on that contract but you're gonna turn around now and write a new contract to replace the old contract and you may well write a 99 dollar contract which is an at-the-money contract next Friday. Again, if the stock's at 99, you're gonna write a 99, but you might not write a one-week contract for seven bucks. You might write a two-week contract or a three-week contract for like 10 or $12, which is more than what you just paid to get this call back. You bought this one back at 10, 10, 50. You're now selling one for 12, 12, 50. So you're actually bringing in another $200 a share in additional cash, and you've raised your strike price to $99. So if a week or two later, as those contracts run out of time, they are, after all, two, three-week contracts, they're running out of time in a week or two. The stock's still at $99 a share. That $12.50 $12. contract won't be $12.50 anymore. It'll be 5 bucks, 6 bucks, 7 bucks. The stock goes to $95. $5 a share in the last week that the contract is alive, the call will probably go down to like four or five dollars. You sold it at $12.50. You buy it back for an eight dollar net additional gain on top of the two dollars cash you got. There you go. You've made money on this whole thing. And you're writing another contract now because you are always writing a contract. Okay. There it is, expressed in the geeks. I think it's the. Uh, um, is there any simple? Are there any simpletons in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina? Uh, how's it going, Zed? Uh, Duncan wants to know. Jeff, good morning, Uncle Bruce and Bagel Gang. Thank you, Jeff, for being here. Nice to see you here. Trying to explain how these options work. We're at. Uh, we have a three hundred sixty-nine point gain on the Dow. Really good. We're at eight fifty-nine on Rocket Lab. Only up twenty cents. Surprisingly, not stronger. SoFi is still weak at eight oh seven. 808 and we've traded 25 million that is 200 million dollars of selling coming in on sofi now i could be wrong in that it might be a hundred million of actual selling and a hundred million of turnover of stock to make the other hundred million that's possible but it's undeniable the stock was as low as eight it's now 807 down 48 cents that is the undeniable part. It is a bargoon of epic proportions. We're up 368 on the Dow. We're up 21 cents on Rocket Lab. And games and GameStop, 8827 down 442. AMC holding 1402 down only 28 cents. It's doing better than GameStop. 
Matterport, 691 down a dime. ME at 363 and a half cents, down two and a half cents. Spire, 188 and a half, down 13 and a half cents. ATIP, 169 a share, down five cents. Smart Rent, 629 up nine cents. And Sixtera, 1150 down 23 cents a share. Over on Apple, we're down one. 56 at 153.17. Microsoft up four dollars five cents to 284.12. Goldman up only a dollar 16. Cisco up 35 cents. Facebook up 345. Amazon down a dollar 45. Tesla down 10 bucks. Google down seven dollars. There you go. We're up 363 on the Dow. Uh, we're only up two points on Nasdaq, as evidenced by how weak Apple is, how weak Google is. Um, how weak, uh, let's see here, uh, Cisco only up 33 cents, Amazon is down five bucks. So, you know, Google's down, Amazon's down, Tesla's down, Cisco's only up 33 cents. Obviously, NASDAQ is not up 300 points. It's up, it's now down three. The Dow is up 300 and something, 356, but that's only 30 stocks. Therein lies the issue at the moment. That's what's going on. Thank you, Uncle B, says Bama Babe. You got it. H. Greg Ungers, I need to roll over my uh, bot 17 and $20 SoFi calls that expire Friday. Do you think rolling to October is enough time or should I go to January? Well, you know, you could go to October for now and then uh, wait a month or two and then look to go to January if necessary. You could always do that. That might be the way to go. I mean, this is, after all, March. So, I mean, a lot can happen. But, you know, for the for, for SoFi to go to $12 a share would not be the most incredible thing of all time. For it to go to, you know, from 12 to 14 15 would still not be the most incredible thing of all time. But it would be nice if it would happen in the next three or four or five weeks. Would that be nice? That would help these contracts in October. Yeah. Zed, uh, Duncan, life is great with Uncle Bruce and writing and waiting to write. And there it is. Just looking to make money. Right on. 372 gain on the Dow. We're climbing again. We're still climbing on this Dow. Rocket Lab, 864, up 24 cents. We're, we're up, but we're not surging on Rocket Lab. With a high today, 868, we're at 864. 2.8 2 million, which is good volume. 2.8 million on Rocket Lab is a good bunch of volume. But I really would like to see us through nine now, but we're not. We're at 864, up only 24. So, Fi, what does it have to do? Um, 25.89 million traded. Still at 811 a share. Amazing to me that it is this cheap. It is just amazing to me. It is this cheap. GameStop, 88.11, AMC, 14.02, Matterport, 8.692, ME, 3.62. We're red, 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 red everywhere except for Smart Rent and for Rocket Lab. Those are the two greenies. Everyone else is down right now, and there you have it. Mm. Duncan, uh, Zed, nice. Always nice to leave some meat on the bone for others. 99 Nations, a Rocket Lab engines are lit but slow takeoff all week with all good news. What can I say? 8.63 on the Rocket Lab, guys. That's it. Mm. Uh, I do new. I just do new. Headlines out of the Wall Street Journal right now. Uh, talks resume as Russia's offensive grinds on. Two killed, a dozen injured after attack on Kiev. On Kiev, high-rise building, Ukrainian officials say. And Russia has banned Instagram, a country afraid of its own citizens finding out what's going on. That is what's going on here. Unbelievable. Um Russians kill civilians, loot for supplies, as in occupied Ukraine residents say. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Headline, Ten Cent faces possible record fine for anti-money laundering violations. 
Mm. COVID-19 shuts down plants in China, hitting Apple supplier and automakers. Lockdowns in Shenzhen and Changchun aimed at stopping coronavirus outbreaks have led to production halts in the latest threat to the world's battered supply chain. Mm. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Lockdown spread across China to contain outbreak right now. Mm. Anyway, Tom Brady is back for football. Go figure, Tom. I don't know. The Dow is up 410 points. The Dow is up 410 points. Amazing. Hmm. That is amazing. Amazing run. Rocket Lab up 24 to 863. SoFi 814 still only uh, down, still down 41 cents. Not uh, able to get going. Just can't get it going. Uh, SoFi running into a bus off selling. Uh, GameStop 87.54 down 515. Still dropping in this rising market. AMC holding 14 bucks. Matterport 693 dropping to down eight. ME down half a penny, just kind of hanging around the break-even line. Spire down 12, ATIP down 4, Smart Rent went green again, up 12 cents. Yeah. Microsoft up 443, Apple down a dollar three to 153.70. Goldman up 219. Cisco is up 49 cents. Facebook is green, Amazon is green, Tesla red, Google red. Okay. There it is. Rosie Posey, I have four January 23 $5 ME calls. I'm up 26%. Woo! Right on. Uh, yep, this little war between UK and Russia is affecting markets big time. Uh huh. Um, I have never watched markets this close before during a battle like this. Uncle Bruce, what is your experience with the markets during times like this? Well, I remember when there was a lot of uncertainty about the, um, the Gulf War. This is just after Ronnie Reagan uh, packed it in and George uh, George Bush, the senior, took over. And we had the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 in, during Bush's first year in office. Good news. Uh, and then... Uh, uh, Saddam Hussein in Iraq. Um at that time, Iraq had just finished fighting a war against Iran through the uh, early and mid 80s. And the two countries went at each other on the battlefield uh, for a couple of years and both lost just a ton of kids, got nowhere. And uh, all of a sudden, the Iraq army is just sitting there with this massive arsenal of weaponry um, that they bought from the United States and from Russia. And uh, um, uh, Saddam Hussein had all this oil wealth. I mean, untold riches, riches were coming out of the ground for Iraq. And uh, he, instead of putting it into citizens' hands and building a middle class and everything else, he basically ran a, a fiefdom. And he, he built up his military spending. And he had one of the largest militaries in the world sitting in Iraq with nothing to do. And no one was going to attack him. What, what do you want to attack Iraq for? Or, so he decides to go after Kuwait. He decides to go after Kuwait. So he invades Kuwait after the world warned him not to. And he went ahead and did so. So now, now the world is telling him to get out or else. And he's just going, make me. Well, 
Okay, so the alliance came in where George Bush, the father, put together the uh, United Nations Alliance, and Desert Storm was launched, and America was nervous. America was very nervous about how this was going to go. Um, and, uh, it, you know, America had watched the, the Russian army leave Afghanistan in, in a, with blood everywhere, just a disaster. Um, the Iranians were unpredictable, and uh, now the Iraqis were flexing their muscles. And so the alliance got it together, and between the, uh, the United Kingdom and Germany and France and Italy and Canada and the U.S., and uh, Denmark and uh, and the uh, Netherlands and uh, Spain, all these countries kicked in, and I think it was fifty three countries. And um, the first days we weren't sure how it was going to go, and then we saw the overwhelming power of air superiority that just started picking off these Iraqi positions, and. Um, and then, of course, the, the tanks, the U.S. tanks that landed in Saudi Arabia and headed to Iraq. Unbelievable. Uh, and the howitzers and the accuracy of these uh, warthog jets. And America's superiority was just so on display here that it was a huge relief. And uh, the markets were very tentative about all of this. Um, but as it became apparent within a week, it was all over. And... Uh, this whole campaign lasted 60, 90 days, and that was the end of that. And uh, we all thought, well, that's the end of the violence there for a long, long time. <laughs> nope. nope, because America uh, and the Allies did one thing. They didn't do the one thing they should have done, and that was complete regi regime change in Iraq. It could have happened right away, and uh, America could have gone in there in in 90 91 with with the rest of the world following america could have talked the rest of the world into doing it and take this guy out once and for all and uh, try to get this country set up for democracy but the iranians were not going to have anything to do with that they were infiltrating iraq and have still and to this day are still infiltrating and so that region remains totally unstable and so george did the next best thing he got the hell out of there and he pulled them out pulled out his troops, set up bases in Qatar, Bahrain, uh, with friendly nations, and built a, a long, at that time, what seemed to be a pretty strong relationship with Saudi Arabia, and move on. And uh, that's how it went. But, uh, yeah, that was the one time that a war scenario was, you know, wearing on, on, on the markets for a bit. Surprise China's doing lockdowns. I thought they vaccinated everyone. I'm starting to wonder wasn't true. I don't think they have. Um, my goal is to save all the cash from writing cover calls is now flowing into buying more shares. Let's go. Bama Babe, did the Iraq-Iran war effort affect the markets and make it so volatile like it is now? I just not watching. Um, for a while. I mean, oil was, um, um, before the Iraq war, oil was, was not doing well. Then when Saddam went into Kuwait, oil went nuts. It just went crazy high. Then uh, he started threatening uh, every Western nation. He's, he threatened every Western nation, don't interfere with us because we're doing what God wants us to do. And he started a, a, a threatening uh, bombs on every passenger jet around the world. No one is safe anywhere because we have operatives everywhere, this kind of crap. And, um, of course, nothing like that ever took place. Uh, but the markets were nervous for a while, and, and, and airline stocks tanked. Um, people didn't go on vacations for a while. It was uh, dicey, dicey, because we were also wondering, what's the Mideast going to do? Are the, is the Mideast going to join in the effort against this guy? Or is it going to go against the effort and back him and, and be against the Western alliance? Well, pretty well everybody was for it. Uh, the Egyptians hated the Iraqis. The Iranians stayed neutral, which was the wise thing to do. Um, but... Qatar was happy to attack him, Bahrain, um, Oman, um, of course, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, um, uh, and on and on. Israel stayed neutral because Israel was being bombed by cruise missiles uh, or some sort of missiles from Iraq. But the Israelis had set up the anti-defense systems to knock them off. But the Americans kept the Israelis calm and defended Israel 
at every turn and warned, no one mess with these guys. No one touches Israel. We're going after Iraq. This is not an Israel thing. Because the Iraqis wanted to get Israel part of it to get the Arab world to go after Israel. This is their chance kind of thing, even though he went the wrong direction. Saddam went to Kuwait rather than going after Israel because he knew to go after Israel, he had to go through Jordan. Jordan didn't want any part of this. Jordan didn't want to be going after Israel. Jordan didn't want any part of Iraq. And so Jordan was happy to help the Americans um, quietly to, uh, to uh, make it difficult for the Iraqis to go anywhere. In the meantime, the Kurds, who were Iraqis, uh, wanted to be independent in the north, and they they tried to set up their own state. And so it just became a civil war within. It became an ugly mess. And it affected the markets for quite a while. It was quite scary for a while. But we did all right. Look at GameStop, 83. Yikes, 84.75 right now. Uh, PLTR down almost 60%. Uh, Dave, if you were wrote it on GameStop, you might want to buy it to close. Uh, GameStop approaching 62% loss. Pick comb. American Air Power is the most significant game changer in its military operations. We're the most powerful military because of our combined forces in Claus White style philosophy. Uh, yippee ki the war. I learned what Sam's were. Yeah. Well, we used to uh, we used to enjoy watching the press conferences with uh, with the uh, the head of the U.S. military, Schwarzkopf. We still enjoy watching the Schwarz Schwarzkopf uh, briefings, where U.S. drones were just blowing the bejesus out of the Iraqi positions and and fortified bunkers and everything else. It was really amazing. And of course, the Iraqis tried the old. Uh, Oh, they're bombing women and children, and they're doing this, and all you know. And they tried to get the world against the United States. The rest of the world wasn't buying it because this guy was a lecherous mass murderer himself. He was just terrible. And so uh, Saddam Hussein got his uh, he got his butt kicked, but he was allowed to live another decade. Big mistake. He was allowed to live too long. Hey, anyway, yeah, Storm and Norman Schwarzkopf. That's right, Storm and Norman. That's right. That's where that came from. And so I think the Russians and the Chinese and everyone else noticed, oh, my God, don't mess with the Americans. they got these drones. They've got cameras up there that are watching what they're doing. They've got cameras watching destruction happen. It's incredible. And then they can broadcast it to their public. I mean, what a, what a PR coup this is for America. And so uh, for a while it was okay until 9-11. Uh, we eventually ran into that. Um, we installed Saddam. There you go. What can I say? It, it, it just isn't pretty over there. Just, there isn't a pretty reputation over there and a pretty background over there. It's not been a good hundred years. Not at all. Um, do you do you have an opinion on how this Ukraine-Russia battle will finally end? Um, well, it all depends on just if anyone makes a mistake namely the Russians or the Belar Belarusians. Um, mm, that war was before the internet. That's right. I remember how easy the Iraqi soldiers gave up their weapons to Americans. They were not interested in a fight for that regime. That's right. They were all conscripts. Uh, all news is on TV or newspapers. That is correct. CBS Evening News, ABC, CNN, they were all there with reporters. That's how we found out about it. That's how we covered it. That's right. Uh uh, don't forget the news conference of the Baghdad Bob. Oh, my gosh. So um, um, the question was, uh, how, is, how is this going to end in, in Ukraine? If there's a mistake, if the Russians make the fatal mistake of shooting a missile over the Polish border, taking out a position in Poland, chasing down ammo across into a NATO territory, that gives NATO the excuse to attack Russia inside Ukraine. Now, what might happen is um, air defenses might be brought into Ukraine and will be used from Poland to shoot aircraft over Ukraine airspace from Poland. Um, what could then happen is Equipment could be brought into Ukraine to be used by Ukrainian soldiers to shoot aircraft over Ukraine from Belarus and then eventually from Russia, which would then screw up, of course, the Russian air attacks and so on. Because right now, Russian jet fighters uh, 
and other aircraft are fighting weaponry over the skies of Russia into Ukraine. So the jets don't even enter Ukraine airspace. They're in Soviet, Russia airspace, firing 30 mile range weapons, 30 miles into Ukraine to create havoc from Belarus, 30 miles in and more. The, some of these can go, you know, 100 miles. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff. So now air, air defenses need to be brought in that can take out these missiles when they're coming in. I don't know if they have enough time for that. So um, it is an absolute disaster uh, uh, economically for Russia. It's an, it's an extreme disaster for Ukraine as a country, that's people. Um, and now the question is, will the, the West, the Western alliance, help out Ukraine uh, in Ukraine without attacking Russians in Russia? That is the thing. Um, the, the hope is that a negotiated peace can be made in disguise, where Putin will back off of Ukraine, stay to his... 20 mile zone of territory he's seized back up to there perhaps and in exchange get guarantees from nato ukraine that they won't expand beyond uh, but the bill will be severe that will be left behind i don't know and um, of course what russia is going to want is an end to all sanctions and the west is going to want russia to pay reparations for the damage to ukraine and that'll come in the form of royalties off all the oil that flows through the pipeline through Ukraine to Europe and natural gas. There might be a way to work a deal, but this is going to take deep secret negotiations, not in front of a camera at all, because you got to save face here. I don't know. Yeah, uh, that was before the internet. That's true. Um, I remember that. That's right. Uh, let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, that country got to take many years to rebuild. Putin needs to have his A2 brute moment, as they say. Yeah, um, It is now a win situation, just waiting on if NATO gets pulled into it. Hope not. Bought GameStop at 85. My wallet's getting beaten savagely this morning. Uh, Poland would go crazy as well with our 2% military expenses. Um, it's a no-win situation. Um, we're at 84.45 on GameStop. This is the low of the day or about the low of the day. Uh, we're awful close at it, 83.68. Uh, we're up, uh, it looks like uh, we're at, hang on a second, we're up, uh, come on, come on, we're up 397 on the Dow. Uh, we're still up 22 on, on Rocket Lab. SoFi 813, down 42. Um, AMC 1394, uh, Matterport down 27 cents. ME down 3.5. Spire down 14. ATIP down 5.5. Smart Rent up 6. Six Stair down 30. So it's just an awful day, even though there's green on the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P. They're all green. But they're not incredibly green. The Dow is up 1.2%, but it's all by itself. NASDAQ is up four one hundredths of a percentage point. No follow through here. Crude, $100.48 a barrel down, eight eighty five. We are right at 100 a barrel, just around that 100 mark right now. That's um, interesting to watch as we are watching um, a Brent and, and Texas lose value in the oil market, dramatic value right now, okay? I read an article about which European and American banks were hardly exposed to debt by Russia. Some of them are going to be hurting. Again, I don't think so, Obama, babe. These, these guys have insurance. Uh, these banks bought insurance on their debt, and they probably did it when they issued it, and they probably reiterated their insurance in the last year as they saw things deteriorating. They're very smart people, and I suspect that they are covered to 90% of their losses through insurance, but it's it's ugly. Uh, Duncan, Bruce, if the Russia stock market opens again, what will happen? It'll be at zero. It'll be an absolute zero. It's a wipeout. Uh, Magic 8-Ball, will the, uh, the UBI go up tomorrow morning? Oh, I don't know. I'm just mesmerized uh, over here, staring at the fires. Over here, over here. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, yippee ki Obama. Another article today is that Russia threatening to seize assets that companies have pulled out. That would be Apple and McDonald's. Again, you can seize all you want, but you can't operate it, and it is valueless. And if you want to get worldwide um, access to your exports, you have to unseize these assets. So they're not getting anywhere with that. Uh, it's very interesting, says Bama Bay. Uh, I just say good riddance. There you go. Nicholas Sprayer TV, love and love. Uh, it's going to be a bad decade coming up for the Russian economy. I mean, there's no, you know, this is not going away anytime soon you can imagine 
I mean, just just think about the midterms and then think about the presidential election in, in another two and a half years. No presidential candidate for any party is in any way going to say, oh, the first thing we should do is normalize our relations with the Russians. You're not going to get elected. Uh, the popular opinion is so anti-Russia right now. There's no way that uh, any politician is going to go, oh, I'm, I'm going to restore full trading relations with these guys. These guys are great. I mean, it's the 25th largest economy in the world. No, they're out. They're now totally out. The one way to defeat these guys is financially. We've done it before. It was done during the Reagan era when Reagan outspent the Russians 20 to 1 on, on, on weaponry. Um, and it bankrupted those guys. And they had to break apart their union just to stay, save themselves. Uh, this is the new game. Putin is going to be taught a lesson. Um, and so will his, his successor, whoever takes over for Putin. Uh, this isn't going to just change overnight. There's just no way. Um, Mama Babe, over a very, very short time, the oligarchs are not happy. Um, yeah, I would not want to be a uh, Russian oligarch necessarily right now. I don't, don't think I'm too welcome too many places right now, I, I suspect. Yeah. Um, Putin only exists because the oligarchs. Without them, he has no power. If they collectively turn against him, he's done. Well, you know, they don't have any they don't have any power to save them anyway. I mean, the company, the country is essentially bankrupt. The first series of defaults start later this week uh, on Russian bonds and they can't pay. OK, um, Obama, I, I have a tendency to be very calculating when I make moves in my life. Most of them entail if it is financially beneficial. I do not understand Putin's reasoning. I think it was his miscalculation. It, it, his reasoning is one thing, but is is a total miscalculation of how he thought things would go and turn, because he was convinced. I think that um, if he went after Ukraine as a whole, that he could take it all out in a week, quickly dominate in a week, and install new mayors and new governors and a new president all under Russian puppetry control, like in Belarus. He did not count on the citizenry and the reserves to put up such a fight because I think he deep down knew his military was a bunch of crap. It was a bunch of conscripts that really weren't able to fight. These guys haven't got the, the experience because he kept his best troops back home. Anyway, I don't know. Uh, Yippee I think that's how we all feel, uh, SMH. Bama. Uh, pick on, when Cortez landed in Mexico, he burned his ships to motivate his soldiers to conquer Mexico. Putin attacking Ukraine means he has burned down any cooperation with the West. Exactly. And uh, as each day goes by, you know, dozens more tanks and anti-weaponry uh, anti and all this stuff being knocked out. Uh, but I don't know. We'll see. Splair, uh, at the topic of McDamott, uh, did, did you heard Russians are selling now, for example, online Big Macs that are stored in the fridge. 15 bucks a piece, limited availability. Uh, Malo. I think Putin believed his own lies about the people of Ukraine would welcome the Russian army with open hands. Probably. Yeah, I totally misread it. Uh, totally uh, missed. Everything is missed, missed, missed. Yeah. And so now this is going to cost him dramatically. Dramatically. Anyway, there you go. This event, this entire sequence of events, uh, with the follow-through that is now going to take place with Western countries lining up and getting it all together. The best thing to happen to NATO, definitely, uh, for funding and, 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 and organizing. Um, the best thing to happen to Macron in France, because he should have a walk field day to re-elect. Um, this could be the best thing to happen to Biden. Um, um, he might actually uh, move up on the opinion polls because the alternative to Biden with regard to how Ukraine will be run and relations with China, with Russia and China could be so unpalatable to the majority of Americans, they will hold their nose and vote for Biden over any Republican because the other party's position could be radical and too much for the average public to want. I don't know. I mean, it only takes one or two percent of a swing of the popular vote. And you've knocked out you've knocked out the right or you've knocked out the left either way oh boy anyway 
I, I hope one of the oligarchs are buying all the burgers in his local McD's. Dave, Uncle Bruce must be an Oilers fan because he said McDavid instead of McDonald's. <laughs> Larry, Uncle Bruce, let's not forget that Trump nearly pulled us out of NATO, so it's not beyond reason that Trump would lift all sanctions on Russia if the United States went brain dead and put him back in office. Prayers for Ukraine. We love you. Um, uh, let's see. Larry lives exactly like the authority and love letters to Kim Jong-un and Putin. Yeah. Um, my concern is that Russia eventually wins in Ukraine. Russia and China form a Eurasian military economic bloc. Uh, again, uh, uh, they might try, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how the West responds. Because I think that in the West, I think that in Europe, uh, they realize that we either are together as one uh, or we lose individually. And um, uh, Putin was hoping to beat us individually. And then now that's not going to happen. So um, there's more fear in Europe than, uh, than uh, anger against any one country. And I think the fear keeps them together. They realize we've got to be together because China is next. This is, this is only the prelude. Um, to make to make Russia an economic backwater is one thing. To now take on China is a whole other issue, and that's going to be another matter entirely. And of course, the Chinese are watching very closely to see what's going on and how this is going, and whether they want to mess with anybody or wait another ten years or not. Uh, there's we're going to see what happens here. I don't know. All right, uh, we're up three sixty seven on the Dow. Uh, we're up fifteen cents on Rocket Lab. SoFi, 804, down 51 cents. Uh, wow. I don't know. Oh, my goodness. Let's see what's going on. GameStop, 86.16 after hitting a low of 83.68. Uh, AMC, 1398. Matterport, 666, down 35 cents. ME down three and a half, Spire down 14, ATIP down five and a half, Smart Rent down two, Sixtera down 33. And this is a Dow up 352 right here at the moment. Okay. That's it. And a lot of talk right now about politics and war. And I'll leave that with you guys. You guys do your talking about that. I'm just going to try to concentrate on the market. I'm down to nine minutes on this show. Thank you all for being with me today. I appreciate it as always. And I'm so glad to see some of you making money on some of these calls you've had outstanding for a while on GameStop. 315 thumbs ups. Thank you for those. Uh, appreciate these 315 so far. And thank you for being in my poll today. The poll question, uh, 530 votes now have come in. By the end of this week, will GameStop be over or one, under $100 a share? Over 148% say yeah. Under 100, 52% say it's going to be under 100, Bruce. Uh, 530 votes. That is pretty close on the uh, on the vote here. Almost 50-50 right on the nose. Thank you all so much for uh, for coming in today and uh, becoming subscribers. And, and those of you who are, who are members of this channel and Gold Bagel members, thank you all for that. Appreciate the, that very much. I'll be on again today at 3 o'clock Eastern time here. And I'll be on tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern and 8 o'clock Eastern on Traveling with Bruce, my other channel, talking about uh, cruise ship travel and travel in general. I'm going to talk about Europe. What am I going to do about a trip to Europe for Jennifer? we got so much over there going on. I, I just wonder. No one's answered me, and no one's, no one's offered me a place to stay in Switzerland. Uh, are, is there no one here from Switzerland? <laughs> I guess there isn't anyone here from Switzerland. I, that must be it. That must be the answer to the question. Anyway, Duncan, uh, number three, forgot to check in. Uh, Yippee ki -yay, uh, Thank you for sharing your experience, Uncle Bruce. Once again, a calming voice in turbulent times. H. Gregory, I hope GameStop blows up after earnings as a reward for our covered call diligence. Bama Babe, thank you for the honest dialogue. Appreciate you. Thank you, Bama Babe. You are welcome. Do the best I can with what little I got. Uh, pick calm, Bama Babe. Putin has nowhere to go at this point. Even if Ukraine is a huge mistake, I cannot see Putin surviving unless he has China. Pure self-interest might force them to be together. Um, 99 Nations. I'm not going to answer. I'm going to stay neutral. There you go. Zed, I'm number 322 on your thumbs up meter. Thank you, Zed. Michael, sorry, my Swiss Chateau is booked until summer season. I just uh, can't get, well, I can't find one anyway. Take care, intellectuals. Thanks. Thank you, Duncan. Vernon, 
Thumbs, thumbs, thumbs for Uncle Bruce. Thanks, guys, for these. So appreciate these thumbs ups. China going to buy the dip on Russia. All of it, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we got issues. There's issues. There, there be problems. There be, there be. Um, man, oh, man. Apparently, oil hit 99.76 a barrel headline went across. as It's as low as it got today. It did break under the 100 today. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, oh, Jennifer Smith. I'm off to the groomers for the first puppy cut. See you all this afternoon. Oh, that'll be something. Ventures with Duncan Bacon and Eggs for Breakfast. There you go, man. There you go. <laughs> right on. Way to go, you guys. Thank you all for uh, for popping in today and catching up with uh, yours truly and saying hi to Jennifer and all that. It's nice to see you all here. And, uh, well, let's see how the markets do this afternoon at 3 to 4. We'll be here for the final hour today to see where we're uh, going to go. Um and let's see what we can do this afternoon with our trading. Um, you never know with these turnarounds. Uh, it is uh, it is what it is. But we'll, uh, we'll 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 take it one step at a time. Three hundred twenty-eight thumbs ups. Thank you. Uh, Five hundred thirty-five votes on the poll question. Man, that's awesome. Real good. Uh, real good participation today. Man, oh man, oh man. Okay. <laughs> Get some rest there, Larry. Saying I will. Have a good afternoon, all. Says Larry. I we will. We all will. Uh, Good Bruce sent you an email before your nap. Could you check? Yep, I'll check that. Um, this is why Elon has to hurry up. Pick home. Says Splurge. Lots of questions. Lots of thoughts. Lots of comments. See how this market wants to per participate between now and the close today. I'll see you with an hour to go at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Thank you all for your continued loyalty to this channel. You guys are great. Thank you. All right, I'm going to take off right now. I'll see you this afternoon at 3. Bye for now.